and models of the world that we might want to live in and sort the feelings in our stomach liberation from starvation but have we made it anywhere at all if the dishes are never done if we can't live without dishwashers the dishes after the revolution well we do our own dishes now we'll do our own dishes then and it's always the one to talk who ask that fucking question
messed up. Uh, I swear to God, I wake up to the stupidest discourse. Y'all need to y'all need to stop letting Twitter people speak. That's just, just my opinion. <laughs> Fucking. I love that James from the internet finally learned his lesson now and <clears throat> learned about Pisadabot. That always always amuses me when people catch up. What's up, Crimson? Yeah. That always amuses me when somebody has their uh, their moment. It's like, oh shit, yeah, welcome to the party. Yeah, Posada Bot's a terrible idea. Yeah. Fucking nice of you to join us on the side of sanity and common sense. Um <clears throat> But as usual, it takes uh, somebody getting fucked over by something for them to actually realize it. Sorry, James. Fair critique. Didn't have shit to say about the authoritarian bullshit absolute problem that is Posada Bot. Until it fucked you over. Now you start to understand. It is what it is, I guess. But be nice if people, you know, caught up and realized these things before. Be great. I can't tell you. Some James basically because he followed or like followed somebody or was in somebody's fucking chat. Um, oh, you're adorable. Um, followed somebody or something in somebody's chat. Fucking basically like, you know, list banned him on a whole bunch of people. <clears throat> so just the automated process, Glazy. And James, James from the internet got fucking bit in the ass by it. So anyway, yeah, this is where it's just starting up here. Uh, well, is, uh, is a mental disorder apparently. Cool. Want to talk about it? I mean, it literally is. Wow. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, uh, first edition Carmelian <clears throat> is um, a little dick nobody. Just literally is. Facts. See, if I just say facts, if I just say it literally is, after it, that's just the end of the conversation, isn't it? Not, not much we can do about it, right? I mean, fucking, it just literally is what it is, man. You're just, uh, you know, a little dick nobody. Meet up with me, bro. Oh, Pookie. Oh, you poor thing. You're one of those people? Oh, my God. <clears throat> Homie. Homie. Yeah, free date, free date. I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. Come, come on, I'll meet you on this trip. I will. Come to Las Vegas. Where are you? It's Friday night in Las Vegas. Where the fuck are you? Some loser fucking uh, some loser fucking town in the middle of nowhere, like Paducah, Kentucky. Man, Kyle always gets hit on. I, Crimson it is what it is, all right. Where are you from, man? <clears throat> what um. What's got you bothered by uh, Lagabrita? <clears throat> Gay people are mentally ill now. Date me is kind of a shitty pickup line. I mean, you know, I've heard worse. I've heard worse. So. <laughs> Glazy. Uh, do I need to tab the sign again? <clears throat> Where'd he go? Come on. Come on, Pokemon. Are you shiny? No, uh, uh, Glazy told me that, like, a, a Carmelian is a mid-tier Pokemon. So you're not even, like, worthwhile. Like, you're just, like, some shitty mid-tier Pokemon. Where'd you go, man? I thought we were having a conversation. I thought we were flirting, frankly. Come on. You can do it, Pookie. You can do it. This is an ambassador for the little bit Where'd he go? Aww. I miss him already.
thought I was going to get a hot date for tonight. <clears throat> I was going to ditch you guys on bad movie night. Sorry, Glazy. There's multiple photos of it. It's not. Uh, Glazy, you can see me, like, stark bollock naked in a mirror, too. If you'd like, I can arrange for that photo for you. Is that what you want to see? Is that, what, is that what this is about, Glazy? You're like, it's Photoshop. Send me more. Is that, that what you're after, Glazy? You just looking, you looking to slide into my DMs? I see how it is. I see how it is. <clears throat> It's really storming outside. I wouldn't be surprised if I lose power for a couple hours. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Well, Crimson, I hope it doesn't happen either. But if it does, I hope you stay safe. Where'd, ooh. Where'd our Pokemon go? <clears throat> I'm, I'm... Which one? What are you asking, Aspen? Anyway, <clears throat> I guess our Pokemon has fled. Oh, well. You shouldn't be dating an inferior Pokemon anyway. I mean, you know, all Pokemon start somewhere. But, yeah. I, you know, I love the, I love the new meta on the Lagabrita. Oh, I, I, I much prefer Lagabrita. Yeah. What's up, Diva? And the more we say it, the faster it gets, the easier it is to fucking flow over that. Fucking look up at it. Fucking, where'd he go? It's just, you know, pussies. Ah, oh, I swear. I swear, I always want to just slide in these people's DMs. When they like do that, when they just run away like little cowards. And so I was like, come back, Pookie. Where'd you go? Wait, where's that one? Aspen asking where the mirror pick is. That one's in my fucking photo library and not anywhere that you fuckers can get to. Thank you, Crimson. <clears throat> uh, that's, again, Pat the Bunny. It's all Pat the Bunny. Ramshackle Glory, fucking Wingnut Dishwasher Union, um, fucking, there's a few others, but it's all Pat the Bunny. Patrick Schneeweiss. Where'd he go? Oh, well. Oh, well. So, yeah. Yeah, apparently, um, fucking James from the internet, uh, finally learned his lesson. Yeah, wait, auto-banning on Posada Bot was a bad idea. Yeah, in other news, water is wet. Um, yeah. I I mean, the bot's a stupid idea. The bot's a stupid idea. It is. And um, the two idiots that run it, like, look, I haven't had any interaction with the primary guy, to be fair. Don't know. But to create such a fucking... His, his account already got bopped by fucking Twitch. Jesus Christ. Um, I've, I've never interacted with the main guy. Um, but I have interacted with uh, the mm, one of the two people that are most involved with Posada Bot. And the second guy I definitely don't like. Um, yeah. So... He can go fuck himself. Um, but, yeah. It's a stupid idea. Has been. Always will be. And it's nice to see James from the internet to catch up, catching up, finally. But, you know. <laughs> Viva. Um... And apparently, apparently the, the Twitter discourse now is whether or not uh, you should flirt at protests and um, whether or not you should uh, be absolutely stone cold sober in and around all organizing. And apparently this discourse was started by uh, an unironic Stalinist slash Juchist. 
Fuck Twitter people are stupid. Um, so we're saying I heard when I clicked on uh, Keffel's stream is that she was going to ban more people. Didn't stay long, sound like an authoritarian echo chamber. I mean, you know. Problem with PosadaBot, uh, in my opinion, is it includes tanky channels. Uh, the problem with PosadaBot is it's a blacklist. Um, fucking old account always got flagged for being banned in tanky chats. What's up, cat? I was just talking shit about Posada Bot, and then I was about to start talking shit about Twitter idiots that think that you shouldn't be able to flirt at fucking protests. By the way, getting your getting your fucking parts wet at a protest? I'm serious. This is like as old as it fucking comes. This goes back to like as near as I can tell, um, the the like the 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 pleb exodus in uh, Rome. But I can find incidents of uh, potential marriages coming out of um, the peasants' revolt in 13, 13, 18, something like that, thirteen oh eight, um, in um, in England. So like, this is like getting your getting your getting your freak on at protests is so much older than even this 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 fucking country and a lot of countries like I, I can't even and the, apparently the same person was like you should be sober at all fucking organizing like things it's like you're a Stalinist like my first thought was you think the Russians who stormed the palace were sober you like you you legitimately think that like those fucking Russians were sober are you out of your fucking mind Russians haven't been sober for the last thousand years. Like, that's just not a thing. I assure you that when they stormed that fucking palace, they were a couple of shots of vodka in, at least. It's not glazy. Fucking cut you like completely glazy. Glazy. You've never been to a protest, have you? Dear sweet Jesus. It, it's it's like war, man. There's 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 moments of intense activity followed by hours of nothingness. Followed by moments of intense activity, followed by hours of nothingness. You're camping. You're cuddling. You're spending time in, in with each other. You're fucking like could be cold and huddled up like fucking I, I mean this is this is this is literally like yeah there's plenty of time to fuck at a protest it's boring then suddenly not protests have drugs protests have always drugs yeah oh yeah Tsar Nicholas II thought vodka was hurting Russians but banning it helped destroy his empire Dude. Oh God, it's that fucking chaos is Mel moron. Oh, no wonder. I have, I have heard the stupidest fucking takes out of this person. This is, this is just, this is just fucking typical tanky retardation. It's about adventurism. And individualism. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I'm with you. Oh, fuck off. <sighs> oh, yeah, this is definitely the... Let's see. Human Rights Ninja. Hmm, interesting. Uh, 
I love this. You shouldn't operate a chainsaw while high. Fuck that. I worked for a tree service for two years and I smoked weed all day long while operating a chainsaw and wood chipper. I was the strongest and most competent motherfucker besides the arborist who was a drunk pill fiend. Love it. Hey, Kaiser, get your fucking people in check. Liberation by any means necessary, huh? Oh, yeah, tech support. Hey, nonsense. I saw fucking Kansas fucking doing shit. I forget what it was, but I saw Kansas was doing shit again. Oh, that's right. You you guys had the 20 legislatures uh, legislators who are members of far-right fucking Facebook groups. Good on you. Um, yeah, only twenty that we're aware of. Only twenty that we're aware of. Nonsense. Um, yeah, here's 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 my beginning, middle, and end. Posada bot is a piece of shit, and anybody who runs it is a piece of shit as well. Uh, second, um, flirting at protests is a tradition that dates back like a thousand, uh, over a thousand years. Go fuck yourself. Um, and, um, sobriety is overrated. Fucking, if you're going to be charging, like if you're going to be dealing with the long arm of the law, right? The, the, the maintainers of the status quo of the state, the ones who have the monopoly of force, having a couple of shots in you or a joint in you when you're actually doing the thing actually goes a long way towards rallying the troops as it were. Um, it's a force multiplier of sorts, uh, as long as you can handle your shit. Um, maybe when you're pl drawing up plans, you know, don't be completely wasted. Also block. Uh, I made this distinction in, um, chat, uh, in uh, discord black block should, uh, should be sober. I do agree with the fact that black block should be sober. Black block is a military operation and you don't go into a military operation fucking drunk. That's stupid. Um, or high. Right, that's that's the black block is a place for sobriety, um, not all the time. As soon as you're done doing what you do, go fucking you know, burn one. You're gonna need it. Um, but you know, during op uh, during ops, block should be sober. But beyond that, like organizers when they're organizing, sure probably should be sober. People at the protest, are you kidding me? Just don't have it on you because that's just an extra charge they can throw our way. Um, but as far as being sober goes, dude, you're going to be dealing with cops. You might as well be a little twisted. Um, and then Block should probably be sober as well. Glazy being glazy as always. How do you not? How are you this dense? Yeah, let's rail some lines and have sex on the street. Surely people will listen to our messages. God, you're fucking retarded, man. You you literally just don't get the... Like, you, you just skate right past everything. Like, you know what? I don't care. I don't care. Glazy, you're 19. You literally know nothing. You're still not even a fucking adult. You're a child who's br fucking brain dead half the time. Why am I arguing with you? Why am I even attempting to educate you on anything? Holy shit. That's on me. That's on me. Um, anyway, moving on. Jesus Christ. Fucking arguing with a child about shit. It fucking never even gotten his dick wet, probably. And meanwhile, I'm out here trying to have a nuanced conversation about the politics and dynamics of protest structures with a person who's never been to a protest, is a fucking child, doesn't have their fucking prefrontal cortex developed yet, and barely knows how to fucking masturbate. They're so goddamn young. Jesus fucking Christ, I'm an idiot. Um, let's see. All right, let's do some headlines before I start to wonder why the fuck I even do anything. Um, oh, look, Florida man gets life in prison for traveling to Vietnam for sexually abusing minors. Um, let's see. What did he do? Um, oh, multiple times. Um, oh, young Vietnamese boys as, as is, as is tradition, as is tradition. Um, 
Yep, went to Ho Chi Minh City. Oh, what's this piece of shit's name? Christopher Edwin Day, 52. Uh, promised with, uh, lured with promises of money and gifts. Ooh. He's been sentenced to life. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Um... Broke Trump counties continue to suffer higher COVID death tolls. Shocking. I'm shocked. Shocked, I tell you. Shocked. I, I just can't imagine a world where denying science and medicine could lead to increased deaths during a pandemic. Uh, I'm surprised the fucking Trump supporters haven't started, like, licking monkeys or something. They're like, monkey pox is fake. I'm fucking, like, we're going to get a fucking monkey and lick it. Uh, I, you know, I really, I really don't care at this point. I, I really don't care. Uh, <laughs> it's, you know, okay. Um... Counties that voted 60% or higher for Trump have a 2.26 times death rate um, that went for the same margin um, by, for Biden. Uh, counties with a higher share of Trump votes have higher mortality rates. Simple as that. More Trump voters you have, more people are going to be dead. States that went the most heavily for Trump, including Wyoming and West Virginia, are among the uh, have the high, uh, have uh, among the highest rates of preventable deaths, while states that voted heavily for Biden, such as Massachusetts and Vermont, had among the lowest. Fuck them. We've already got at least one case in the states. Them licking monkeys is my headcanon now. Monkey pox is caused by those gorilla NFTs. <laughs> facts. Facts. I mean, Zippy said facts. It's a fact now. Just, I mean, I, I don't make the rules. Uh, honestly, I'm really interested to see how this shit factors into upcoming elections. I am too. I mean, fucking Republicans are killing off their own voters, which is hilarious. Oh, look, doctors in Alabama are already turning away miscarriage pa patients. Who would have guessed? I'm shocked. Again, just shocked, I tell you. Let's see. Do we have any, like, firsthand accounts of this? Yes. Ooh. Yeah. The patients are already been fucking told uh, they have to wait 48 hours to get the results of blood work. And then at the end of the blood work, the doctor didn't provide the standard medical treatment for miscarriage, which is surgical removal of the contents of the uterus, uh, which would have stopped the patient's pain and bleeding. Um, this is a doctor reporting this. Then I saw a different patient who was actively miscarrying and a light bulb clicked on. The doctors were being af afraid of being attacked by the state of Alabama. Um, yeah. They're going to just leave women to bleed out. That's it. I do what you got to do, Karina. Do what you got to do. More proof that the U.S. is a center-right party and a fascist death cult. Um... Spain's going to allow girls over 16 to opt for uh, abortions without parental uh, consent. Like, while we're rolling back to the fucking Middle Ages, Spain, on the other hand, is like, yeah, dude. If they're, yeah, fucking Spain of all places. Like, Spain is not, uh, they, they have a... Fuck, Vosh is a fucking moron too then. Yeah. It, but, but, I mean, a lack of nuance in an argument from Vosh Caboose is about par for the course. 
Do we love or hate Spain? I need to be told what to think. We both love and hate Spain, uh, public. Uh, 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 traditionally, um, like a tradcon society, very, very traditionally Catholic. Um, they have a lot of catching up to do in certain areas, but they're also a European nation. So in a lot of areas, they're fucking leaps and bounds better than us. So both. Um, but yeah, fucking 16 year olds without parental consent. I'm for it. I'm fucking for it. What do we got? Oh, Jesus. I remember seeing this one. Oh, this is fucking ridiculous. This is fucking ridiculous. The average rent in the U.S. last month hit a record high. The new, the new average rent in the U.S. is eighteen hundred and twenty-seven dollars. The minimum wage is seven dollars and twenty-five cents. That means the take home for that is twelve fifty-six a month. It's literally impossible to live in this country. It's just, it's just functionally impossible for like an entire class of people. <sighs> Average livable wage is now twenty four dollars, uh, twenty four an hour. Um, I I saw that I interpreted that beast as like average livable wage is twenty four hours worth of work and now. <laughs> But look high. Landlords provide housing. Yes. Sure they do. Oh. Um let's see. Oh yeah, Russia. 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 So Russia's doing so great. So great. Russia's doing amazing, by the way. Um, they're, uh, they're kicking around a new policy in Russia to allow people over 40 to join the military because they can't cover their losses manpower wise. Russia's like, well, what if we fucking let them, what if we, uh, you know, let them in, let everybody in a fucking the babushkas in. So yeah, Russia's, Russia's concerned <laughs> fucking 40 year olds and above. Public, yeah, a lot of people's money would have would have been lost on that first like that first month of combat. Well, I mean, caboose, at least the 40 year olds probably wouldn't have wouldn't be tagging their Instagram fucking usernames on the wall where they committed a war crime. Just saying. Oh yeah, cat. Um, fucking Cali, Cali people. Primary registry uh, deadline is three days. Get fucking registered. Do your shit. Um, it's even older in the U.S. and Europe. No, it's not. Um, maximum age for the U. Uh, for the U.S. Army is thirty-five. Navy waivers start at thirty-four. Uh, Air Force max age is 39 and Marines are 28. I don't know what Coast Guard is. Coast Guard's super fucking, uh, super athletic though. People overlook. Um, that's, that's enlistment. Um, the, there, there have been specialty waivers during certain periods of like, uh, fucking like non, for like non prior service enlistment. But yeah, that's just blatantly incorrect. <laughs> Germany's 28. I went over the Dems list and it's entertaining. Uh, oh, I got to actually see who's running. I went over the Dems list and it's entertaining at least. Made it fun, uh, like 20 minutes of stream. You got public doing, doing some pol a politic in public. Look at you. Um, and I don't know what the reserves are. Reserves have their own, uh, their own deal. Um, there, there's like I know, um, I know the seals will give specialty waivers for 29, I think, because the seals are pretty strict. They're 17 to 28, um, and then they give specialty waivers for 29 and 30, I think. Um, 
because they give uh, for, you know, yeah, uh, for, you know, specialty fucking training and purposes like that. UK is 30 older are allowed for special things. Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh, Jesus. But like, and a man who uh, made a slideshow about homelessness and how it's bad, I think. I'm not sure if the concept of homelessness is bad to him or just homeless people. It's always so difficult to tell. Um. I, it's stu- Papa John. It's fucking moron Twitter discourse. It's it's just more on Twitter discourse. Just just pay pay no attention. Um, don't even worry about it. Um, also, I'm pretty sure federal law caps um um like enlistment age at 42 for all branches. They all selectively go lower than that, but like federal law is I think 42. So that that could be crit. You know, benefit of the doubt for the person who was speaking. Uh, can I interest you in a tinge of capitalism? Um, mm, can we take it out back? Old Yeller style? Like, is it ours to do with what, what we want? Like, cause we'll, like, it's like that scene from what, Parks and Rec, where fucking Ron Swanson just, like, keeps taking the fake bacon and putting it in the trash. Like, are there, is this an unlimited amount of tinges of capitalism? Can I just keep putting it in the fucking trash over and over again? Certain officer placements have no age limits, such as chaplain. I mean, fuck, like chaplains matter. But, heard. A tinge of cringe. There is no, see, this is the thing. Capitalism is viral. It will seek to dominate and take over any system that it is active in, and it's a constant war with it. Hi, I'm an anarchist. Shitting on... See, it's the thing. Capitalists don't know how to shit on communists because they've never really dealt with them. You want to shit on a communist, go talk to an anarchist. Can I burn the capitalism in my wood stove next fall? It would be nice, wouldn't it? So, remember the um, the fucking like fifteen year old or whatever um, that uh, um, shot up the high school, um, Crumley, Crumley, um, killed. Oh, I forget how many, f- four or five, four. I think he killed four people. Um, this was the parents that fled. Remember, uh, Crumley was the dude. He was the kid whose parents, like, fucked off and tried to do a runner. Um, and so we it has come out in his, like, in discovery, basically, um, that the parents were, let's just say, super influential in building this young man's ideological spectrum. His goal for the shooting, apparently, per per information discovery, um, was that he was hoping it would lead to Biden's impeachment. This is a 15-year-old fucking high school student, barely, who believed going on a uh, shooting spree in his high school would lead to Biden's impeachment. Yeah. So, you know, fun times. Uh, Che, uh, Caboose, fuck if I know. Fuck if I know. Um, uh, Che, Crumley, Ethan Crumley was one of our school shooters, like, I don't know, half a year ago, something like that now. He, um, he shot up a high school, but it wasn't just like emo kid be bullied sad. Um, this is in the same vein as the other ones. Um, he, it was politically motivated, but it was politically motivated because, um, of his parents. And like I said, like when he was arrested, when he did the shooting, when he was arrested, he, the parents fucked off. The parents tried to pull a runner, um, and they had to be tracked down. 
Yeah, yeah, it was the 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 kid the kid's parents got him the weapon. Yeah, Peaky. The parent the kid's parents got him the weapon. Like they straight up Yeah, they straight up like pumped this kid's brain full of like noxious QAnon fucking Trump MAGA shit, gave him a fucking AR fifteen and sent him to school basically. Yeah, they hired a lawyer, but not for him. Yes, that is, that is, that's the same guy. To be correct. Yeah, that's Ethan Crumley. Those are the parents that hired an attorney for themselves, but not their kid. Um, the family values, isn't it? Yeah. Um, in his, in his journal, he explains the purpose behind his writings and he expresses a desire that his actions would be, quote, so big that sleepy fucking Joe Biden will have to make us make an apology to uh, uh, people. Hopefully my shooting will cause Biden to be impeached. The fact that a 15 year old referred to, to Biden as sleepy Joe Come on. Um, the idiot in chat thinks Stalin liked anarchists. Yeah, that's definitely how our relationship went. Commun no, I said communists agreed with them. Jesus fucking Christ. No. No, they didn't, Pookie. Oh, my God. A beast just going straight for the jugular. Whether you have a bit fucking age of consent. Ah, uh, that's not how that works. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> Still one of the best ads ever made, Caboose. Uh, didn't they also say uh, not to say that out loud when he was reported saying genocidal stuff at school? I don't know about that one. His account is three hours old, by the way. Oh, lovely. All right. Well, I'll be sure to pay close attention to that fucking idiot. Um, anyway, Stark Lunacy is, is strong tonight. Um, what the fuck 15-year-old cares about who the president even is? Uh, Joe Biden is a joke. Hey, congratulations. We're not fans. We're anarchists around this uh, this community. By and large, most of us are. We're not fans of Joe Biden. But we're also capable of doing utilitarian calculus. And we're also capable of, uh, you know, utilizing harm reduction methodologies. Trump was more dangerous than Biden. So Trump had to go. It's that simple. But nobody's a fucking fan of either of these people. And if you, like, don't understand that... If you can't comprehend that, if you're so dense or so uh, willfully uh, ideologically blind, then there's not much that we can do for you. Uh, w W was funny. I'll give it. I'll give it that. W was funny. <laughs> Maleficarum. I can't do calculus actually. Oh, Glazy would vote for Hitler. Glazy would vote for Hitler. During during um, Nazi Germany, Glazy would have been a Nazi. 100%. I don't doubt that in the least. Yeah. Glazy, you'd be 100%. You'd be fucking serving. You'd do what the state tells you to do, and you'd fucking serve. What? You're going to you're gonna be a fucking freedom fighter? Come on. Be real with yourself. In 1932, there are a lot of people you know that would have voted for the Nazis this week. Yeah, 100%. Fucking Glazy's in that camp. Glazy, 100%. You would have fucking voted for Hitler. Uh, I want... Idiots in chat to shut the fuck up. I want health care for my people. I want a country that doesn't spend $800 billion a year on war infrastructure. I'd love a fucking, uh, a, a so-called justice system that for once actually meted out some form of restorative justice. I'd love for the cops not to murder like so many people. Um, and dogs, by the way, so many dogs, so many dogs. 
I'd love for an economic system to not be coercive and oppressive by its very uh, definitional merit. I'd love for a politician or a political class to be eliminated. Um, I would love for the capitalist class to be eliminated. I'd love for a reevaluation of what it means to own property in our society. I'd love for, you know, X, Y, and Z. And now you're going to do some fucking, like, how you plan to get there. And fucking, I don't feel like explaining any of this to you. So at the end of the day, fucking, you know, good luck to you. Oh, Pookie, Astro, I have a house. Yeah, Astro, you've just made a whole host of assumptions. I have two insurances for healthcare, and I have a house. That door actually goes outside to my fucking, uh, to my gated uh, internal courtyard. So... Like, take a drink. He doesn't get the difference between personal and private. No, 100%. These people don't understand. 100%, Swede. 100%. There's no fucking way any of these doofuses understand fucking the difference between personal and private property. They have zero economic or poli sci education. None. And whatever they say, dude, Swede, it's going to cause your brain to hurt. It's not going to be me. Hey, Swede. There you go, Swede. Wait for it. There you go, Swede. Right there for you. Swede in, Swede in with the win. Oh, 100% Astro makes uh, assumptions about strangers. Probably, especially if they're brown, black, or gay. Yeah, I'd, I'd guess they're probably super fucking racist and super fucking homophobic and transphobic. If I had to fucking put a shot in the dark. Anyway, hey Deirdre, how are you today? Hmm. Mm. I, I mean, Che, right? <laughs> What's up, Captain Jackass? Jesus Christ. That's a fucking... Um, chat, be smelling the chest tonight? Um, Deirdre, this last week, my back has been a mess, and it has fucked up my workouts, and you know how I get when my workouts are fucked up. So, yeah, Swedes in chat. Oh, that Haldo person wanted to make sure that everybody knows he's white and European. Just so everybody, just so everybody knows that Haldo account here in chat, he wanted to make very certain in a previous comment that everybody knows he's white and European and proud as fuck of it. So, so you know when dealing with the Haldo account, you're dealing with a, uh, you know, white pride type of individual. Um, the, uh, and Astro is arguing with somebody with dual degrees in economics and finance at this point. This is hilarious when that happens. <laughs> Maleficare, I'm very based, my Aryan brother. I am also not Jewish. Swearsies. Hey, Sonia. <laughs> it's on you just showing up with the fucking popcorn. Let's do this, bitch. Uh... Yes. So we have we have oh, oh we have a uh, white supremacist of sorts, and we have somebody who thinks they know more about uh, economics and finance than Swede. Wah, love it. Always love it. We need a solar punk game. I was thinking about this the other day. Um, we need a solar punk game. Yeah, I think that that's, 
I don't know what um I don't know what the 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 the, the, the call to action would be. Solar Punk 2077. Um, I don't know what the call to action would be. Like, I, I don't know, like, in a Solar Punk game, what what it would be. And I'm talking more, like, ground level, uh, Captain. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm talking more, like, like, ground level RPG sort of territory. I don't know what, the, like, the plot line or call to action would look like for a Solar Punk game. But... You could definitely like probably like do the transition or like some of the like final pieces for solar punk falling into place and i guess you could do like fighting against the the the, the remnants of the old system um but maybe like a building sim dude a building sim actually would probably be a good like building mars sort of thing well that's that's my point captain is that i don't know what the the, the the call to action the the actual plot driver would be um no rev uh you're gonna need to look it up more than that but at the end of the day it's sort of like it's sort of the opposite of um it's sort of the opposite of uh, cyberpunk still high tech just different tech uh, oh, I know a couple of Green City Sim style things you could do, but a more RPG one I don't know of. Yeah, Che, I'm trying to, like, what I was thinking, Che, like, here's here's my thought process, is for Solar Punk to, um, yes, see, that's the thing, Caboose, Solar Punk is usually optimistic. Um, for people to experience it, they need to experience it, right? Like, to, to for this to catch on as a concept in their head, they have to sort of experience these environments. And video games are some of the easiest way to do that. Um, so, yeah. I, I, I think that... Solar Flare and you have to beat the fucking sun into submission. The white supremacist reminded me of this. Which white supremacist? Um, the fucking... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Solid. Solid. Who the fuck? Who put that in? Crimson. Solid work, Crimson. Love it. Oh, I'm I'm sure they would be hilarious. Astro XP2. Uh, it, 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 I, I'm sure. Tell you what. Why don't you whisper them? to one of the people in chat so we can share it on our Discord server. Hey, AJ, so we can we can partake in your hilarious comedy. I'm sure it's actually super funny and we can bypass TOS just like that. So why don't you send it on over to somebody in chat and we'll share it around so we can all have a good chuckle. Master joke writer, like fucking Astro XP up in here thinking they're uh, saying they're George Carlin. Like, you know, I got fucking jokes on jokes, man. Let's hear them. Don't just fucking tease them. 
Don't fucking just, don't just rub the head around the fucking entrance. Put that fucker in there. Balls deep, bitch. Let's get at it. You gonna breed this bitch or not? Yeah, it's Karina. It's about the only fucking call to action I can think of. Yeah, we got an actual stand-up in here right now. Like, AJ is a fucking stand-up. <laughs> Resolution. Oh, Kai, you're such a beautiful human. <laughs> you like that abs absurdly hypersexual fucking <laughs> take on it. <laughs> Resolution. I want to hear a joke about jokes. Yeah. Dude, I want to hear it. Come on, man. Yes, of course I do. Invite Astro to bad movie night. Oh, Astro couldn't hang the fucking yokes. <laughs> Astro couldn't hang for bad movie night. I guarantee it. Fucking Karen, goddamn to you. Oh, did you see Wells Fargo staked a uh, staged fit um bad movie night, Glazy. The same thing you can't hang for. Uh, Captain, I got a solar punk plot. You're the, uh, you're the AI taking over to fix the environment while dealing with the humans while not allowed to kill them. Interesting. Actually, that could be a whole host of really fascinating me mechanics, Captain. Yeah. Hmm. Giant meteor of death, please. A uh, 17 year old boy died by suicide hours after being scammed. Um... The FBI says it's part of a troubling increase in sextortion cases. Oh, I had one of those. Sweet. I've, I've had a sextortion case. Eh. I had a fucking dude um, slide into my uh, DMs on a fucking hookup site. Um, and we started chatting. And then like two days later, he sends a fucking message saying, uh, claiming to be his father and that he was underage and that his mother was a prosecutor and he's calling the judge if I don't fucking, you know, send him money right now for like therapy and shit like that. And I'm like, I got an attorney on retainer, homie. Like this is a scam and a half. Let's fucking do this. I'm like, let's do this. File your case. I'll be waiting for the police. Yeah. Those fucking, if you don't know what's up though, those things can be terrifying. Yeah. Poor kid. Fucking poor kid. Uh, some meme account tweeted that Costco were raising the price of their hot dog combo and their fucking their pre stock price dropped their stock price dropped 13%. I love the cyberpunk future. It's so fucking stupid. <laughs> um uh beast that scammer's probably not even in the US. That scammer's probably in India or Africa. So Oh, Jesus. I'm still waiting on that um, joke. I'm still waiting on that joke. <laughs> My mother at age four had me listening to Arlo and Woody Guthrie. I grew up in Vermont surrounded by anarchists. I was deeply involved in technology from the word go. I was surrounded by punk, uh, the punk scene, the rave scene, and the anarchist scene, and I was an Occupy organizer. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you, man. Go fucking sit on it. Like, yeah. You're not hearing good faith. You know what? You're not hearing good faith. Uh, Astro. Yeah, shout out to Guthrie. Um, Astro, next bad faith comment, you're gone. Yeah, next bad faith comment, you're gone. It's your warning. Um...
Let's see. Uh, yes, Sweet is highly active in the economics field in the private sector for large investment banking. Swede has seen more money than you ever. Hey, and there's the fucking typical right wing chud bullshit. Wait for it. It's a joke. I do a funny. Love it. Um, Swede has seen more money in a single day than your entire family lineage dating back a thousand years has ever seen. I'm not joking and I'm not being hyperbolic. Swede, Swede is in charge of protecting more money than your entire ancestry has ever encountered. And he's compensated very effectively for his expertise within the field of finance and economics. Yeah, you are, you are, no, he's not. He's not another quant who got hired to do the uh, formulas, man. That's not who what Swede does. So, yeah. Like, there's very few people that be like, yeah, I was, you know, hanging out with four billionaires downstairs on a regular basis. Yo, Swede, sneak me a couple thou. <laughs> uh, no, I'd argue that even being in a U.S. Mint is less, there's far less money in a U.S. Mint than what Swede sees on a day. That's not even close. It's not even close. Close. Yes, uh, Pound Coin. Yeah, he is. Uh, Papa John, yeah. If if I were if Swede gave me the 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 okay and said limits off, tell him what I do, like straight up, Glazy, there very much is. Yes, there very much is. Yes, yeah. We're 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 talking billions. Do you know how much money a mint typically has in it at any given time? Let's find out. Okay, congratulations. The Mint only makes coins. So you were either at the Bureau of Engraving and Printing or you were, uh, you were at a Mint, but the entire Bureau of Engraving and Printing produces 38 million notes a day with an approximate face value of 541 million across the entirety of the network of printing. So being super generous, Glazy, at most you've seen a, uh, a half a billion dollars worth of currency uh, in a single go. That's still not even close to what Swede's like responsibility includes. It would, it would take multiple generations of your family like hanging out at a mint before you were even in the ballpark. We currently have over 900 billion in raised target over the next 12 months. No, yeah, Caboose, he really does get to see it up close, like super close. Like you, Swedes... Sweet is sweet just Bank of America's one transaction machine. Um, sweet, sweet is yeah. It was sweet be like, what's this chump change? Um, yeah, arguing with sweet about economics and finance is, I don't know, like it's it's like arguing a I don't know, it's like arguing with Thomas Jefferson about the the Declaration of Independence. It's like, you know, you, this bitch wrote it, right? Like, what are you doing? It's, it's the most absurd. I love, I love that Astro has pivoted so hard because he started getting his shit pushed in by the fact that Swede is way, way out of his fucking league. He's sweet, dude. Swede's talking above this moron. 
And he just like, fuck, you don't know anything. It's like, Sweet is an expert in his field. That dog don't hunt. I actually get to have meetings with Blackstone in the morning and then walk over to Goldman in the afternoon and then going to dinner with BlackRock at night for an average day. He's trying to out-chan you of all people. Bobby, we have a few experts in their fields here. Yes, we do. Bobby amongst them. I, I fucking, dude, it's just absolutely hilarious to watch these fuckers pivot and backtrack as fast as they possibly can. Wait, did this... Memes were created in 2016? I mean, Dawkins created them back in the fucking 80s, like, as a fucking term. Like, that, that's fucking... Like, what, 90s, 80s? Jesus, when was Dawkins? It would be 76. 76. <clears throat> 76. 19, 1976. Or 2016. You know. Yeah. I don't care if he fucking aged well or not, homie. You're just wrong about everything you say, which is hilarious. Every fucking thing that falls out of your mouth is like immediately demonstrably untrue. It's adorable. What are you, fucking 18, 22, something like that? How old are you, Astro? What you got? I'm guessing early 20s. I personally, I don't even think he's going to make it out of 18, but he feels like lazy territory. So like 19, 19 to 22. Old and old enough to fucking old enough to think his his dick is big, but young enough still to not know shit. So all of his dates, his facts, his figures, his understandings of economic systems, totally incorrect. I don't know. Glazy was redeemable. This guy doesn't feel redeemable. Uh, 1998, by the way, 1998 is when, um, Webster's dictionary tracks the funny gifts to be, uh, to be called a meme. 1998, uh, it's found in the Nexus database, by the way. So for those of you who have, we get Marcus in here, Marcus, uh, Marcus has a Lexus Nexus account for legal, uh, legal searches. Um... Fucking yeah, this motherfucker doesn't know shit about shit. Yeah, 1998 is when LexisNexis tracks the first iteration of the the first instance of this use. Yeah. So I was on the internet to, since 2007. We have an approximate age. Homie, homie, child, child, sit down and let the adults speak. Fucking A. This is, this is fucking adorable. This is adorable. The child was on the internet since 2007. Yeah, like fucking, fucking Momo's up in here. I graduated college in 05. Homie. Sweet. 98 was a good year. Freshman year of college. <laughs> so they're like 21 at most. Yes. 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 They, they're, they know nothing. They know nothing. They, they, they have only experienced their own version of history. They've never researched shit. This is hilarious. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's 
2007. <laughs> oh. Okay, then Glazy, you were at uh, Bureau of Engraving and Printing, not a mint. A mint. Here's here's the distinction, so you know, Glazy. A mint makes coins. The Bureau of Engraving and Printing makes bills. Ah, oh, in the olden days. Yes, in the before times of 2007. In the before times, in the way, way back of 2007. <laughs> <laughs> and I was on the internet. I've been on the internet since 2007. <laughs> oh, and fucking Ryan. I was freshly sober in 2007. <laughs> oh, fucking A. And he, the internet started around 2004. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh oh my god the internet started in 2007 the internet contained 97% of the telecommunications information for the globe by 2007 it was a firmly established network that that was global we I mean I can't even I can't even begin to holy shit like, I don't even know where we start. Do we start with like, I don't know, ARPANET? Do we start with X25? Do we start with like TCP IP? Do we, do we need, does, does the internet, I suppose we should probably do the CERN TCP IP global switch over. And then web 1.0 would probably be around 89 at least. Uh, the first ISPs were in the, the, the eighties. That'd be what, Cynet, UUNet, and Portal. And there was another one as well. Um, but the, uh, the first commercial dial up would have opened up in 1989 in the U S. Um, so I mean, Jesus Christ, I, I, I don't even know. Uh, I don't even know when we started, uh, 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 TC, uh, TCP, uh, TCP IP for, um, for CERN because CERN, it would have been North, um, Northstar and, um, Kirsten's group. Um, at uh, UCL took uh, uh, they left ARPANET and took the TCP, uh, TCP IP protocols over to SATNET and then 84 to 89 I think was when CERN began using TC, uh, TCP IP for all major interconnections and then 89 is um, 88 was the, uh, the, the, the international connections to NSFNET um, and then 89 would have been the first ISP, uh, commercial ISP launches. Um, so yeah. I, I, I've never, I, I, wow, just fucking retarded. I still <laughs> spent a lifetime in that industry. Oh. 
Oh, let's see. What was there? What was there? There was, oh, I don't know. Uh, email, instant messaging, fucking discussion forums, like precursors to blogs. Um, fucking like, you know, I mean, international fiber optic cables connecting all of the major uh, educational institutions. I, I like boobies. There was tons of porn. There was tons of porn. He doesn't know what the internet is. Get on the air. This is it. We're doing it. <clears throat> get on the air. We know what happens here. Either you get on the air or you leave. No, he's gone, Glazing. You get on the air, you're gone. I spent my entire life in this industry. Yes, he has to call in. He has operated in bad faith and spread bullshit in chat for the last 20 minutes. He either calls in or he's gone. Yeah, he, he knows nothing and he operates in bad faith. So he either calls in and has the conversation or he's gone. Astro, this is your final warning. We're starting the sound effect. Uh, here we go. Congratulations, you, um, you are not, uh, you have found, uh, you have been found wanting. The Heaven's Gate website has been up since, oh, God, the late 90s at least. Um, give him 10 minutes to log in. Well, he's gone. <clears throat> I, I, this is, this is the most miraculous, I, I can't even, uh, I can't even begin to understand how fucking retarded you have to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Heaven's Gate is fucking still up in all of its 90s glory. There. Here's the history of the internet. I mean, Jesus Christ. A look. Email and Usenet, 1979. <laughs> File sharing FTP. That'd be fucking, let's see. Uh, BBS is in 78. Usenet in 80, FTP in 85, Gopher in 91, fucking IRC in 88, WWW in 91. But don't worry, none of this is fucking, none of this existed. Oh my God. I kind of, I kind of want him back. I kind of want him back. He's so retarded. It's almost adorable. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like even Freenet existed in the year 2000. Like, Napster was 99 for fuck's sake. Fucking search engines, web directories, and www, uh, World Wide Web, uh, isn't, uh, 90, it is 91. Fuck it, I still can't believe Napster is 2001. Jesus Christ. Pirate Bay is 2003 for fuck's sake. I, I, that's, that's astounding. Jesus, it's been a while. Fuck me, you are dumb. You are the dumbest motherfucker. And this this shit has been up since like what? 90 fucking 5? <clears throat> Uh, 
Oh, but I was serious. Uh, Astro, you either have to come on the air or I'm just going to continually time you out. What was GeoCities? Oh my god, he doesn't even know what GeoCities is. I know, I unbanned him, Deidre, because I'm a fucking psychopath. Um, he doesn't know what D GeoCities is. Holy shit. He has no idea what GeoCities is. Um... <clears throat> okay, so Astro, I'll tell you now. Um, Astro, nobody can see what you're typing. I have shadow banned you, Astro. No one can see what you're typing. Literally, yes, I have shadow banned you. So. Anyway, so <clears throat> on back on to uh, some other topic because no one else can see, <laughs> nobody else can interact with him. So I'm just going to ignore him now. Anyway, um, so an ex deputy, that's probably, you know what, that's probably best for Popo's Bizarre Adventures. Um, but either way, oh God, did you guys see Delaware, uh, Delaware's house, uh, um, Delaware's house uh, bill? Um, failed to uh, failed to pass because of one vote the uh, the legislator who put it up was actually out on a fucking sick call and another guy did what a strategic absence and as a result the the marijuana can a recreational cannabis uh, the re cannabis recreational bill uh, in Delaware failed to pass one fucking vote all, de all at the end of the day due to vote manipulations by the uh, by the uh, House uh, members themselves. It's absolute fucking bullshit. But failed to make it. They're hoping to uh, bring it back up for another vote in um, a couple of weeks. Um, but at the end of the day, it is what it is, right? Like, they, they have to fucking... It was a sick day. Yeah. Was gonna vote to legalize weed, but then I got high. Oh, no, no, no. Who timed him out? I, I was fine with just ignoring him. He was gonna he was just gonna fucking temper tantrum him, himself to sleep. That's all. Um, it's adorable. Anyway, I know the mods like don't want to have to see the spam, but it is what it is. <sighs> yes, let's do the wing nuts of the week. Fucking um. Let's see. Okay, so the Democrats in the U.S. House of Representatives passed a bill that would make price gouging illegal. 200 and... Uh, you're so good with kids. I used to work for the Boys and Girls Clubs, actually, Captain. Um, 203 Republicans voted no. None voted yes. Dems passed a bill providing 200, uh, 28 million in aid to ease baby formula uh, shortage. 192 vo Republicans voted no. 12 voted yes. So I suppose yay on that one. Um... The Georgia governor, uh, uh, gubernatorial candidate, uh, Candace Taylor, said that the First Amendment foundation, uh, the First Amendment gave the founding fathers the right to destroy Native Americans so we could all worship Jesus. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Candace Taylor's a nut job. Yo, I mean, you know, she's the one whose um, slogan is um, Jesus, guns and babies. <clears throat> her, her campaign slogan is literally um, uh, Jesus, guns, babies. That's 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 her campaign slogan. It's absolutely insane. Yes, we watched the video clip last night. In fact, nonsense. Um, yeah, they for those of you who weren't here last night. 
there was a woman giving expert testimony before Congress who um, believes that Washington, D.C. is powered by burning babies. How do you worship Jesus again? Is it one or two middle fingers up? <clears throat> is that her priority order? Probably. Yeah, probably. Good, good, good. But lefties don't want to burn anything. <laughs> we just have babies in bioreactors. Yeah, that was... We uh, we also thought, like, you know, I mean, if you could convert them to fissionable material, babies would have a lot of energy in them. But at the end of the day, burning them isn't very, uh, isn't very productive. Baby fission. Um... Oh, and uh, did you all see CPAC is being held in Hungary? Hadron Baby Collider. <laughs> Babies are a source of tritium, eh? Um, the only thing that stops baby a baby Jesus with a gun is a Roman baby with a fission reactor. Fuck yeah. I did. What the fuck is all that? Is that all about? I don't fucking know. But <clears throat> it's always fascinating to see the fucking like uh, the conservatives go f even further, mask off, and host their fucking like their their convention, wi uh, you know, in a place literally run by a right wing authoritarian dictator type. <laughs> Are baby bones just lithium duride? Because that would make sense. Yeah, it's it's some of the craziest shit. Like they're they're fucking. Uh, her ad whines about slave trader statues being ta uh, taken down. That ends with her wanting to demolish the Georgia Guidestones. Demolishing those is okay too. Well, you know, dark maggot is coming. Oh, um, for nobody, uh, for anybody who didn't see it, I posted the um, <clears throat> the new dark maggot image uh, in memes. But don't worry, I'll put it on screen here in a second. Everyone, dark maga is coming. Emo arc. <laughs> that guy invited me to an orgy. <sighs> no, uh, I found that. I no. In fact, no. Uh, that is not a caboose special. Or maybe it is. I don't fucking know. Caboose, did you post your fucking meme to to Reddit earlier today? Um. Oh, he went away. See, this is this is why you like you don't even bother uh, mods. Like when we get somebody like that Astro dude, you don't even bother fucking timing him out. Just fucking shadow ban him and let him tire himself out, and they'll leave. Um. <laughs> he just had to he had to temper tantrum his way out. Why the Georgia Guidestones, though? It'll kill Alex Jones's career. Dude, seeing AJ fucking talk about how uh, he was so sick of fucking Donald Trump and wish he did, how he had never met him. It's a great fucking clip. Um, Truth, I'm just gonna say. It's the truth, I'm just gonna say it, but I wish I never would have fing met Trump. Oh, for fuck's sake.
Enough with your editorializing. Just show the fucking footage. I was say it, but I wish I never would have fucking met Trump. I wish it never would have happened. And it's not that the attacks that I've been through. It's I'm so sick of fucking Donald Trump, man. God, I'm fucking sick of him. And I'm not doing this because it's like I'm kissing his fucking ass. You know, it's just like I'm sick of it. <laughs> oh, even even AJ is like, God, I'm fucking sick of Donald Trump. <laughs> When even Alex Jones, <laughs> me too, Alex, me too. When even Alex Jones is sick of your shit. <laughs> oh. Oh, does Puka not know what? Um... <clears throat> I didn't see the question. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here from Proudly Radical. Since I owe Kai a few favors from back in the old days. Uh, shit, I probably shouldn't talk about that. Wait, why are you still recording? Fine, fine. Just be sure to edit it out. Anyways, as I was saying, well, this is Alex Jones, and I just wanted to teach the proletariat a few things about anarchism. Anarchism isn't about chaos. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Anarchism is about the people. It's about solidarity and mutual aid. It's about removing unjust authority and hierarchies. We should all be anarchists. The world would be a better place. Now, I'm going to apologize again to all those parents whose lives I ruined because I'm such a douchebag. Jones, out. All right, guy, this has got to make us even for that uh, incident you helped me out with. Uh, <clears throat> uh, here, Puka, this is, this is the Georgia Guidestones. That's the Georgia Guidestones. <clears throat> so. <clears throat> oh, beast. It did. That thing did help put uh, AJ on the fucking map. There's an argument to be made for just about everything, Papa John. <clears throat> some say this, some say that. At the end of the day, we don't really know. There's, like, we know, like, fucking, I've seen some of the history. Like, we're pretty sure we know who paid to get it put up, but we don't know who, where the money came from and shit like that. You really got to stop helping AJ hide his uh, dead prostitutes? If that's what you think I helped him with. That's why we leave it open. It's funnier that way. Oh. Did y'all see the um, the main town? <clears throat> I I can't say this fucking town's name. Um, Pasadumkig? I I Pasadumkig? I, I I don't I can't I can't. P a s s a d u m k e a g. Either way, it's a town in Maine. Um. Oh no, no, Che. There's like a trail on it. Um, <clears throat> it was there. Jones sat, unable to lift from the floor. Bashful, red cheeks and nude body. Kai, his kink contract stood. Uh, they're comforting the hair man. Um. Comforting the hair, man. It's a common problem for those learning, but the suction cup is stronger to the floor, and the knot is firmly in the man. Kai smiled, knowing how to fix it, knowing he'd have to, uh, he'd have a favor from Alex Jones. <clears throat> Did you say pass the dumb cake? I mean, it kind of is. It kind of is. P a s s a d u m k uh, k e a g. Um, they have one clerk in this entire town. This entire fucking town. 
They have one fucking clerk. She requested a two-week vacation a month and a half ago. She was denied by the board of selectmen in the town. They basically said that no one was available to replace you. So she quit. She left. She was like, fuck it, I'm out. Peace. No one, <clears throat> no one to register vehicles. No one to do the record keeping for the, uh, for the town, the city. No one to communicate with the wildlife and fisheries department. Um, no one, to, they, they have no code enforcement. They have no assessor. They have no like administration to speak of whatsoever. Um, it is, the town is effectively shut down to all, uh, like all administrative functions in the town are shut down to in-person visits. They have no, they can't, they, they have nothing. And replacing her is not as straightforward as just like hire a new person. All they had to do was fucking give her her fucking two weeks vacation. Oh, criminally, criminally underpaid Zippy. Criminally. She worked more than 16 hours each week. Okay. She was contracted to work 16 hours each week. She worked more than her 16 hours every week. And she was only paid $13,500 a year. Okay. So... Yeah. They. Fuck them. Fuck their shitty little town. Fuck their bullshit fucking selectmen. Um, fuck, fuck all of it. I hope their fucking town falls into a goddamn sinkhole. The, the, the paperwork came through and the, the clerk was like, oh, hey, there's a fucking notice from the Department of the Interior. Fucking, I'm sure this should be... Fucking fuck them and their shitty little town. <clears throat> fucked around and found out. Yes, exactly. They fucked around and found out. Fuck them. Like, why should I give two shits about their shitty little town? Well, it's not the people, Kai. It's the selectmen. Uh, the selectmen were chosen by the people. Fuck your shitty little town. Chuck the whole town in the fuck it bucket. Yep. Yeah, fuck their whole, fuck their shitty little town. I hope they never get anything done again. Yeah, exactly. Good for her. Fucking, you're underpaying me. Criminally underpaying me. And you're going to fucking come at me with that bullshit? Go fuck yourself. Fucking, I want a two-week vacation. That I'm due. No, you can't have it. There's nobody to replace you. Really, there's no one to replace me. No, we can't. We can't find anybody. Hmm, interesting. I might tuck that in the back of my brain then. Deuces, bitch. I'm out. <laughs> Rip past the dumb cake. Uh, past the dump cake. Bucket, fuck it, bucket. That should be a porn store promotion. A <laughs> bucket full of random assorted toys. Oh, yeah, for sure, Deirdre. They knew they were taking advantage of her. They knew they were taking advantage of her. 100%. Oh, Rev, I'm sorry. Good luck with that. I know, right, Captain? Like, this is the last thing you'd want to admit, right, to somebody who's, like, mission critical for your town, that who's being criminally underpaid, that, like, we don't have anybody to replace you. Really? No one whatsoever. Hmm. Fascinating. That might be a useful piece of information. Fucking dummies. Is it? I, I, I don't. What do people think? Like, what? what I, I just can't. It's just sounding how fucking stupid people are. I hope she becomes a supervillain. Ah. <sighs> It's likely going to cost the town millions of dollars. No, it won't cost them millions, but it, it, they're not a big enough town to generate millions uh, worth of anything, uh, <laughs> Cassidy. But, um, yeah. yeah, it's going to cost them. It's going to cost them. Um, yeah, it is. It's a fucking power trip, Zippy. It is. Yeah, they could have just hired a temp, but no. No, they couldn't do that. Uh, 
Uh, last I heard, actually, they're more than that. Um, the the town is like 225 or something like that, Puka. Like, at present. Either way. <laughs> AJ, I feel you. She's close, but I think she, uh, but she me thinks I mean landlords are all bad people and she's been assaulted by shoplifters at Ross. I mean, just stay out of their way. I tried to explain that second was the company's fault more than the shoplifters. Yeah, like that's just made some progress though. <laughs> I'd offer to do the job, but I'm a unionized European. They couldn't afford me. Oh, I meant financial worth. Oh, yeah. No, they're just, yeah, the city's like, dude, the town's only got like 225 people in it or something like that. Uh, and AJ, trust me, we all struggle with that one. We all struggle that one. Is there more on that? Fucking A. Remember that uh, f uh, the photo of the... Um the bill uh, for healthcare that I showed you the other day, $40 for uh, the brief emotional behavior assessment, $40 for crying. We have confirmation from um, the woman's sibling. They, she was never evaluated. There was no assessment. They literally charged her $40 for crying. That is in fact what had occurred. Um, Yeah. Yeah. They noticed she was crying. So they charged her $40 for brief emotional slash behavioral assessment. Um, <clears throat> so don't, don't cry at your doctors, I guess is the, the lesson of the day on that one. Jesus fucking Christ. We're screwed. It is. It is. Good news. We're actually up to 78 unionized Starbucks. Something. I'd be a billionaire if I charged that every time a, cry a client cried with me. Um... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure, Cassidy. I can cry with my cat and it's for free. Oh, I just, Jesus fucking Christ. I'm having a lot of fucking weird random pain lately, but I suppose is a pain disability. That's to be expected, right? Meanwhile, I got a week of paid leave. If I cry at a doctor's office as Viva, suck we fucking suck so tonight I have why is there not there we go Jesus fucking Christ that was slow to respond um So tonight we have um, Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter and Surf Nazis Must Die and uh, Who Killed Captain Alex. It depends what order, how long we go, how long we stream, that sort of thing. But like I said, I've got, um, I've got the movies picked out. Yeah, so Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter 
Um, Surf Nazis Must Die, that's 87. Uh, and then Who Killed Captain Alex? If you don't know what Who Killed Captain Alex is, you're in for a treat. It is, um, uh, I do believe Uganda? Uganda, yes. Uh, Who Killed Captain Alex is Uganda's first uh, action movie it's, uh, in 2010. Um, done completely bare bones budget. The guy assembled his computer for editing, like out of like fucking uh, like garbage parts, like literally assembled out of fucking just trash. It's what spawned the Ugandan Knuckles meme. I didn't know that. Everyone in Uganda know Kung Fu. Um, nice. All right, AJ. Um, yeah, uh, Jesus Christ fucking Vampire Hunter is... Um, look, I don't... I don't want to spoil it for you, but you need to understand the movie that we will be watching. There is a scene in which Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter slits somebody's throat and then brings them back to life. Okay, like you have to understand the movie is kind of amazing in a few ways. Um, so yeah, like he, he literally slits somebody's throat and fucking brings them back to life and says something along the lines of, um, even this can't change my love for you, my child or something like that. Yeah. Oh, good on you, AJ. That's good. Um, and then Surf Nazis Must Die is fucking... Yeah. Oh, it's it's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah, public. I mean, you're always... Like, if you're not streaming... I know you're usually streaming public, but if you're not streaming, stop by. You're always welcome. You know you are. Um... So, yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a good night for uh, for movies for sure. Is there? A... Kill that. Oh, oh, Starla, thank you for that follow a couple hours ago. <laughs> oh, a couple hours. Oh, good for uh, good for you, Viva. Um, I mean, the fact that if you get any sleep whatsoever, Viva, good job. Like that's, yeah, it's a good thing. Oh, come on. Anyway. So we have 80 confirmed cases of monkeypox. 80 confirmed cases of monkeypox. And I'm waiting for fucking like conservatives in this country to start like going to like zoos and shit and trying to like lick the bars at the monkey exhibit or some the monkey house or some shit like that. It fucking I just I just expect it at this point. Uh no, 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 Cassidy. It is not sexually transmitted. The World Health Organization made you specifically, specifically, they made sure to state that, in fact, monkeypox is not sexually transmitted disease. <sighs> of course they would, public. Of course they would. One pandemic at a time, please. Or they go in and shoot the monkeys. That's my uh, that's my money. Oh Jesus. Um. Oh, this say, oh, I was saying it's mostly gay by people now. I did not see that, but if that's oh, Jesus Christ, I can't. I can't again. I, I can't. Like a TOS, 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 TOS across the board. I just can't. If I have to live through another fucking, yeah. Tucker's going to send them all to like the railings and zoos. Oh, oh, um, what happened to those truckers? 
The last I had heard, the truckers were gonna like roll on DC today or something. Don't know. Either way. <laughs> I mean, Rev. Reasons. Reasons. Last time an ape was shot, it started to spiral down. Oh, fuck me. You're right. Dude, this is all because of fucking Harambe, isn't it? Dick's out for Harambe. Let's see, hang on. What? Oh, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I fucking saw that one. <laughs> just, just all of it. Just all of New Mexico. It's just a red flag warning, Zippy. It's just all of it. The entire fucking state. Uh. the monkey pox it's snowing in Denver Jesus Christ God I desperately want to poke that with a fucking needle just want to I want to see it drain I want to see it drain uh, I don't know what story you're talking about. Nonsense. Yeah. Must not pop. Don't though. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I know Cassidy. I know the pus is how it spreads, but I desperately want to see it pop. <laughs> R slash popping has entered the chat. Uh, yeah, I just, I, just, I need to. I know. Couldn't we like sanitize or sterilize the area and then like pop it and then douse everything in bleach or fucking, I don't know, like medical grade, uh, you know, um, something. Oh yeah. Nonsense. I don't know that story. Um, yeah. Like it's just, let's just, you know, ivermectin it, <laughs> sprinkle some ivermectin on it. Call it a day. My day, the boy made I was Windex. Give me a name. This is uh, according to an expert on blood related viruses. This is my one. Uh, this one might have a lot of different ways to spread. Rub dirt, walk off. Yeah, exactly. I mean, also, do we need to talk about fucking Elon? The day before, you know, the, 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 um, 
the uh, business insider reporter who broke that story about Elon being a sex pest called him the day before he announced on Twitter that he was going to be fucking, he's like the left was coming after him and he's a Republican now. That happened the day before he posted them, that message on Twitter. That, that was literally what happened is the business insider reporter called him for comment and said, what's up? And so the next day he's fucking on Twitter going, the left is fucking woke and out of control. And this is why I'm going to vote Republican. Yeah. Shit. I sexually assaulted someone. Who can I go to now that'll accept me? Yeah. The Republicans will. 100%. It's just, there was a dude on Reddit that called it, by the way. There was a dude on Reddit that called it straight up. Yeah, I don't think this is responsible for the monkey pox. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, nonsense. <sighs> oh. I wonder what the odds are uh, Elon getting margin called, though. Yeah, I don't know. Well, we knew Tesla shares were going to drop. Ugh. Also, it gave him an, an excuse uh, buying Twitter, which, you know, he wants out of. Um, buying Twitter gave him an excuse to dump a bunch of Tesla shares that he knew he was going to take a hit on. So, I mean, he's he's kind of like the king of market manipulation at this point, to be fair. Like, they, uh, fundamentally, everything Elon does is, at some level, basic market manipulation all the way up to some, you know, elaborate market manipulation. But it is market manipulation at the end of the day. He does it all the time. Yeah, yeah Swede, by all means. Ex just explain the entirety of the fucking, uh, like, how, how and why would Elon be fucked by this? Give me a, give me a primer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Elon's in that camp. Uh, fucking partying with uh, Ghislaine. Ghislaine Maxwell. Air Swede. What's uh? Yeah. So just give me. Okay. One. I don't even know where to start. Just give give me the primer on Elon Twitter Tesla slash market manipulation slash margin call. So. The, the basic premise of Regulation T, which is governing all of this, is that this all comes from 1933. Uh, so this goes all the way back to, you know, 1929 and what happened then. People were bought, people were loaning against stocks all the way up to 100% of their value. Well, Reg T came in in the Securities Act of 1933 and said, you can only do 50% of the current value of the stocks. And if that value drops below 20 or if if the value drops another 50 percent so 25 percent of original 25 percent of margin you have to below the 25 percent you have to bring it back up to 25 percent so you have to cover the difference you have to cover the difference so based on the 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 drop on the twitter shares so is like musk would be left holding the bag on that one yeah. So if so if he he if he margins uh, Tesla say a billion dollars to buy it or whatever whatever it was let's just use a billion because it's easy numbers uh, and that means he can take out or the loan is a billion dollars that means at most Tesla's worth two billion if Tesla drops by to to a point where that number how the math works. I had it in my head and now it's gone. <laughs> uh, but the, the number drops 50% or 50 of the difference. Then he has to get it back up to, or he has to pay down the loan. So if Tesla drops and he's, if he's fully margined up, where's he going to get the cash to do the margin call? And that's where the problem comes in. So he needs financing and that's where 
who was it through Blackstone that was doing the financing or was it Goldman? Um, but he needs to be able to securitize that somehow against the value dropping because Tess or uh, Goldman or Blackstone, or whoever's providing the financing, will just come in and take the shares off of him for collateral. And then he'll lose control of Tesla. So there you go. What's he going to, how is he going to, predictions, ideas? Um, well, a lot of this stemmed from his ability to stems from his ability to to publicly manipulate the market through his tweets and keep you know keep keep uh, Tesla shares at least somewhere on par of where they were, or at least within a, a range where he won't have to make a margin call. With the current environment that we're in, I mean, the market's already down like what eighteen percent or so this year, stuff like you know, you, you just yes. go on and on and on with what's going on so far this year, and then Tesla's obviously taking quite a hit. Um, interest rates are going up. Uh, his now, and then also his monthly interest payment is 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 variable. So if interest rates go up, his Payment's going to go up, and so Isn't that like, there's other things on this loan that also contribute to his wanting to back out now. Because I'm sure that there's like a, a DSCR, which is debt service coverage ratio, uh, that's attached to this, which takes you, you know how much cash flows you have versus how much interest payments you have. If your interest payments are five hundred thousand and you've got cash flows of a million, you have two to one coverage. Uh, pretty simple to understand on that. Now, if that if if you have to maintain, say, a two to one coverage, and your cash flows don't go up, but your interest payments go up, then you're in violation, and you're in default, and they can foreclose on you. And you know, that basically means he could lose, you know, almost everything at that point in time. So he's really in this whole deal levered himself to the point where he could lose Tesla. Um, Karina, I don't think he can answer that. Um, but private investment firm, I think Karina, uh, Karina asked like your mom wants to know where you work and I'm um, like, if you can't disclose that, what's a good way to explain? Uh, a, a, a large investment bank that has a seat on the NYSE. There you go. A large investment bank that has a seat on the New York stock exchange. That's, that's, that's the description. Just, that's what you get. It's one of the oldest <clears throat> seats too. Um, so for forever. Now the company name, the parent company name is not the actual company. I work for one of the subsidiaries. Um, so what, um, what is his exposure on the, like, do we even know the numbers we would need to know to know his exposure on this? Is are, are all these numbers public or some oh, of this? Public. That's oh, all okay. public. So, so what, what, what isn't public right now is what the strike date of the valuation of the Tesla shares is. So when they promise that they're going to loan X amount of dollars, what was the valuation of Tesla on that date and, and the strike date? And cause that's, that's where all regulation T starts is okay. Here's the strike date. Here's where everything goes. If the value drops, here's where all the margin calls and here's where the, the breakpoints and everything are. If you if if you get to now as far as how much, if you know the strike date and the price, you know exactly how high the, the, the financing can be, you know exactly you know what he's going to pay and where any other sources of financing have to come from. So a lot of it's public, but a lot of it is a little bit of a guessing game based upon what date is the strike date on the loan docs and the loan agreement. We don't have a copy of the term sheet because that's private. And we, it, what that won't go public unless, until it's fully agreed upon and an 8K will have to be filed with through Edgar. Edgar is the SEC reporting system for all your Ks, Qs, um, any, anything material that happens with the company, they have to let the public know. So that makes sense. When will we likely know how badly his ass is hanging out over the edge on this? 
Well, I see that's the thing is, is, is he committed and has a material change uh, happened to the point where the loan no longer makes sense for all parties? Is there an out clause? Does he have to pay like a billion dollars to get out of the deal? Does he have to pay a hundred million? Does he have to pay a million? There's a lot of details to this okay. that I think have come out, but I don't know exactly like how truthful they are. Um, there's a lot of speculation. Yeah, I heard on. the I heard the billion dollar kicking kicked around. Yeah, and you know, for for Elon, that's what one one hundred fiftieth or one three hundredth of his net worth. So, but also like that's actual like you got still you, a kick in the junk. You also have to actually like transfer that value. Like it's not like paper paper value money sort of yeah. territory for a lot of these guys. It's like no, you owe us a billion dollars, bitch. Pay up. So, and that's the, pro- that's the other problem. So when, when you're an insider as Elon is, which means you own 10% of a company or you're like on a board of directors, or you're in some position where you know, you know, the material, uh, non-public information of the company, CEOs, th- those are all insiders. You can't just willy nilly sell your stock, you know, tomorrow you actually have to go out to the public and be like, okay, over the next month, I am going to sell X number of shares on the second day of every month. If it's a market date, if it falls on a weekend, then it's going to go to the following Monday. It is going to be open up at the morning, at the market, whatever the market is for the next 12 months. And then you can't deviate from that because the the ruling is, is you know too much to, to just, you know, up and just sell. Uh, which, you know, you and me both go, well, yeah, that makes sense. So when, when this goes on and say the billion dollars in, in Goldman or Blackstone or whoever goes, no, we want cash. He's got to turn a billion dollars worth of Tesla into cash. So then he has to go out and take a lo- out a loan for a billion dollars to cover that. And then he's got to go out and do a planned sale that hopefully the stock pres- preserves its value over the time of his planned sales to cover the loan payments. How do the taxes work on um, like liquidating and like if he had to if he had to pay that billion dollars? Like, do you pay taxes on that? Like, do you pay uh, the the taxes would be paid by the the lender because that would be income toward the lender. Okay, uh, and it would be a deduction for Elon. So, uh, it would be a write off for him. All right. Pending. If, if it was personal, then no, there's no, then, then it's taxes paid and no, and no, but he, he wouldn't do that. All right. Um, he so had, it all depends on how it's structured. Yeah. I just kind of want to know how fucked he is, but we don't really know, do we? Uh, I mean, from from a little bit of a, a outside view, I mean, we I'm not claiming to know have any insider information or anything on this, um, and nor am I giving any. But again, if you really want to pay attention to this, go go try and find any reference to a strike date, and that get that will start. Then you'll be able to back in all the calculations of where he needs to be, and if there's been a quote unquote material change that enables him to do the back out clause. Yes. He'll have to pay a penalty. Yes. He'll have to do a whole bunch of things. Um, and you know, this whole plan sales stock thing is, is why I suggest that, yeah, we do a wealth tax, but we give them a one-to-one credit for any stock that they transfer directly to the employees. So that transfers the ownership to the workers, um, which is what we all want. Anyway, um, that's a sidebar. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, I'd look for that strike date, look for when the valuation date of the loan agreement was and the margin, and then you'll you'll be able to back in and, and find out exactly what that is. Now, I don't think I don't think I've seen anywhere where anybody said. This is this is the date that the loan was, you know, says the valuation was. I don't think that's happened, and I don't even think that may have even happened yet. It may be like one week prior to closing, whenever the closing happens. Hmm. So basically, the long and short of it is, we don't fucking know. 
for a while? Yeah. For a lot of reasons, we don't know. Um, my guess is the way he's talking, it, it looks like to me he's trying to back out. Um, Twitter shareholders are going to be ticked off. I mean, it, how how is what he engages in not like blatant market manipulation? Like as far as putting in the offer to buy Twitter for fifty four bucks, everything Elon Musk does. Like everything he does seems shady. Like the fucking Solar City shit was shady as fuck. The Tesla valuation seems shady as fuck. The pumping and dumping and like manipulating stock prices because he gets on Twitter and says some shit that's memeable and all of his crypto bro idiot fucking Musk stands go out there and fucking play around in the market. How is everything he does not market manipulation? <laughs> Well, I mean, he's an influencer. Uh, he, he influences how people view the markets and how people react to it. Uh, what he's saying technically is not what's called material non-public information. He can go out and say, this is my opinion of XYZ company, and I think their leadership is trash, and I think you know, they need to do this, this, and this to really you know, do whatever stock falls because Elon says X, Y, Z, he goes in, scoops up a whole bunch of shares, uh, and you know, at a lower price. Um, and then, I mean, this is how activist shareholders like, uh, Bill Ackman and those guys do this all the time. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's very common for these things to happen. Uh, as long as you, as you don't say, Something to the effect of, I know XYZ company is going to report 21 cents a share when they're supposed to be expecting 31 cents a share. You all should just dump right now. That's illegal. That's just flat out illegal. Um, where you get into the gray areas is saying, I know, or, or I don't think that they're going to report earnings anywhere near what they forecasted or what their guidance is. If you know, you know, they're only going to report 21 versus 31, that can be viewed possibly, you know, that's that gray area, depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, if you, or if you, if you even profit from it, like you can say, go out and say that and then never buy or sell any of the stock and nobody's going to really care. Um, but then you can just say, my opinion is management is trash and they're running the company in the ground and if you're an influencer, uh, you know, the SEC could come after you, but I don't really think they can do much because you're not really, I mean, if, if it's blatant enough, they could probably get you and bar you. But other than that, I don't think they can, they can disgorge you. Fair enough. Yes. Car accident. It definitely seems like a system that breeds exploitation. Do the finance, the fiduciary responsibility thing is the thing that irritates me the most in your entire industry. That, Which is funny because it's one of the best things and one of the worst things all at the same time. Yeah. That thing, that rule is like, dude, it comes up so often about like why some evil shit just happened. You're like, cause they have a fiduciary responsibility to the shareholders. Yeah. Fuck. Why does the company do X, Y, Z? Well, who, who is it benefiting and who do they have a legal responsibility to do the best, best interest of? It absolutely drives me insane. That fiduciary responsibility clause is just like, dude, that just seems like that is the source of a lot of evil in this world. <laughs> well, and that's why we have the B corporation um, standard that's becoming quite popular now is where, board of directors no longer has a direct fiduciary responsibility to shareholders. It has a dotted line to the shareholders with a more solid line towards uh, secondary, what would be normally considered secondary objectives, such as the ESG model, which is environment, sustainability, and governance. Yeah, I was going to say, I saw Tesla got kicked off the S&P SG. Yeah, and they should because uh, governance is, is a problem there. Governance is a huge problem. I mean, they've they've had racism problems. Well, I mean, for how many years now? Their fucking dude said he was fine with cooing a government to get lithium. <laughs> that too. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we did that in Bolivia, didn't we? Rev Rev would like us to consider apples, though. So, you know, 
everything we know might be wrong because of apples. <laughs> um, but yeah, just the fiduciary responsibility also is what protect, protects individual clients when working with, you know, their, their financial advisors and things like that. So the problem isn't the rule. The problem is, is we don't have another rule that acts like it, that allows for things, or we didn't up until uh, B Corps came out. The whole thing seems. <laughs> but everybody's already pretty much a C Corps. So in the C Corporation, the board has to basically reports to the shareholders and that's that. Now, if the shareholders are the employees, that is a whole different dynamic. And you and I, you know, can spar back and forth on whether that, whether we can get to a point where the shares get transferred to the employees over time. But, um, I, it's happening on a small scale. No, nah, I'm just, I'm with beast. Just burn it all down. Start from scratch. It's too broken. <laughs> It's just, it comes, uh, it's, yeah. it, there comes a time when you just raise the building. You're like, yeah, you know what? There's asbestos and like lead in the ground and fucking all, it's all tube and fucking, what was it? Uh, tube and socket or whatever the fuck the old wiring standard was. And fucking this, I'm pretty sure there's lead plumbing in the place too. Like just tear the whole this fucking thing down. New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck it in the fuck it bucket. Yep. <laughs> This building sounds like it's built in New Jersey. I mean, definitely got an East Coast vibe. Uh, knob and two, knob and two. Thank you. Thank you. Is one report for property in New Jersey? Uh, salty earth, the tree is diseased. <laughs> Foundation cr- crumbling, knob and tube, asbestos. Fuck it, grab the gas. Yeah. If you ever want a fun read about you know how much we have polluted the earth, uh, go get a phase one report which is the environmental report that when you buy or sell commercial property, it has to be done on like a New Jersey industrial property. Oh, dude, <laughs> I saw, I saw somebody I fucking some fucking show one of those discovery or something ages ago about somebody pulling up a, uh, an old, um, oil tank, um, in a, in a New Jersey fucking like, parking lot basically of an industrial area and they're like oh it should be like you know uh, uh it was supposed to be like a 500 gallon tank or something like that and it turns out it was like a 2500 gallon tank and it was completely like corroded and leaking and they hadn't fucking the people who had installed it like lied on all of the paperwork and stuff like that and it had been there for a lot longer than anybody expected it to have been there it was bigger than anybody expected to have been there it wasn't empty either like it was just it was like holy fuck man <laughs> yeah that, that's that's what would come out on a phase one report it's it's funny to read some of those jesus fucking christ uh, like when we raised money for the entire like harbor side on the uh hudson river like the the whole new development over there it, it the, the phase one even on manhattan island was just disgusting oh um exhol asked uh what are your thoughts on possible recession um, well, uh, as is, uh, capitalism, uh, we're going to have one when we have one. I have no idea. Uh, and, uh, and so he- here's, here's the cold hearted view of what recessions are. Recessions in capitalism are the forest fires. You technically would like them to happen often and very shallow because they clear out a lot of the dead weight within the economy. And this is purely the cold hearted view. This is not my view. So, so what you're saying is having, um, three, like 100 year crises within like two decades of somebody's life is probably not the ideal. Uh, I think you're forgetting 1991 because that was a really bad one too. Well, that just fucking, that just, okay, so for three decades then, yeah. fucking add another one. Like, it's just, it seems, it, it seems they're increasing in speed though. Do you, like, if you remember the recession in 2000, it was a very bifurcated recession. Any company that had positive cash flows in 1998 did fine all the way to 2003. The, the, the recession was so minuscule that, and the Fed overreacted. Um, we're actually discussing that currently right now in principle of macro. 
uh, it, the Fed just completely overreacted and dropped dropped rates way too far, which caused the whole housing bubble. But that was a recession that cleared out a lot of the chafe. And the people that lost were the private equity venture capital people, the people that understand the risk that they're taking and can handle said risk. Um, if you had money in, in value funds and mutual funds, which are basically, you know, dividend paying positive cash flowing companies, you won. I mean, small cap value, which is traditionally incredibly volatile, did 20, 30% per year between 2000 through 2003. It was nuts the way that did happen. So <clears throat> Zippy wants to ask you, as a disabled millennial, how likely am I to get a house? <laughs> this is going to be a hard one. Zippy, what's the difference between zero and 0.00000001%? Something in there. Um, Exol, on the other hand, had a question I'm pretty sure you can't answer, but I'll fucking ask yeah. it anyway on behalf. Uh, if you had to guess what percentage chance of a recession over the next six to 18 months. Mm, can't answer that one. No, yeah. That's guidance. Yeah, that's I figured that was in that category of like legally can't answer type question. Um, so yeah, <laughs> exactly, Ducky. Yes, the dot com boom, bef uh, the dot com boom and bust before the internet. That dude was the dumbest motherfucker I've encountered in a very long time. That dude was dumb. Were you here for him? Yeah, you were here for him because you were arguing. Yeah. Fucking this moron tried to argue with you. Um, I read what he was saying and I basically said, there's nothing I can say that can change his mind. No, it's, it's functionally retarded. Um, <laughs> fucking, oh, see, I think that's an insult to the disabled people. It's fair. Uh, Karina, <laughs> it's actually not offshore businesses that you like, especially in Canada. It's not offshore businesses. Uh, offshore businesses account for like something like 2% of your housing market. It's, it's single digit percentage. It, it, it's not the offshore investors that are fucking up your real estate market, especially in Canada. It's your domestic yeah. investors. It's, it's also not Blackstone. Look at the amount of black that Blackstone like puts into uh, single family housing uh, deals compared to the market as a whole. We just have a supply problem. We have a major supply problem. Well, we and that's the whole system's unbalanced like, and you come and you go straight back to 1965 through 1975 and the government basically taking housing projects out of the budget. They yeah. accounted for 20% of all construction, I believe in 19 in the mid sixties of new domiciles, whether they be, you know, multifamily high density or, or single family, uh, community building. Uh, it was, it was crazy how much the, the government was basically putting into making sure there was enough housing for people because we had uh, those baby boomers. No, our, we had a population boom. Dude, our, our rent, uh, our official rent, like the average rent in the U S is now $600 more a month than what somebody on minimum wage can make if they max out their hours. Mm -hmm. like this is just broken like this there's there's like you know i'm just looking at this from like a technician standpoint like an engineering standpoint like if i were building something like there's just you can't there's only so much you can do in certain areas like i can't i can't put an elephant's worth of force on this one little lever right without reinforcing and all sorts of like backstopping and those sorts of things like it seems like what is going to, like, do you have, what the fuck happens, man? Like, how does this continue? Like, it, it seems like we're, we're headed towards like some massive, like readjustment. So properties that are bought for income purposes are bought at what's off called cap rate. So you take the amount of net operating income divided by the price you paid for it and whatever percentage that is, that's your cap rate and your cap rate essentially has to be above the financing rate. So if you're paying 3% on your loan, your cap rate has to be above 3%, otherwise you're in negative arbitrage. Now you'd like there to be enough spread like 100 basis points 
um, 100 basis points is 1% uh, or more spread between the financing and your cap rate. Well, today that is roughly 50 basis points and uh, people are going in on 350, 350 basis points to you know, 400 on housing when financing is 400 and they're expecting that to go basically the, the, the deal books are coming through that they're pushing, you know, first year 8% rent bumps to be able to make these deals work. Um, now with the Fed coming in and bumping rates, eventually that's going to counteract a lot of what's going on and prices are going to start to come down and a lot of these um, deals are going to uh, basically turn into 1% you know, cash flow deals that are going to piss off a lot of investors. Oh, boohoo, too bad. Um, and because people buy on payment. So if interest rates go up, valuations have to come down. And the next cycle of interest rates going up and then coming back down, where financing becomes affordable again, that's where you get the ebb and flow. The problem is, is we've been sitting on 0% rates for how long? except for that blip in 2016. You tell me. Um, in 2006. I mean, we've had four years out of the last 23 uh, at non-zero percent you know, overnight rate on the Fed. And so uh, it's created this where we don't have this nice ebb and flow. And, and again, I'm speaking from the perspective of how this is supposed to work, mm -hmm. not how I... Yeah. Want it to work. <laughs> yeah, it just it just seems like none of this it just seems mathematically unfeasible. In the long run that's true. I mean, we're going to we're going to run into a housing crisis. Now the 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 what 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 is going to be what what's a bigger problem and this goes gets back to this Peter Zahn video that you showed a long while back that you probably need to watch again because it's getting even more relevant as we get about 10 years out from South Korea, China, and Japan imploding. Um, Dude, I was watching a thing on, Ch uh, on um, um, China and Japan just yesterday. Jesus fucking Christ. Like, I was looking at something recent for China. Um, that was their, the three red lines um, for China. Mm -hmm. That's what that was about. And then Japan was just a shit show, as Japan always is. Well, China is even more interesting because their bond market is not public. It's just four banks trading back and forth with each other. And so you don't have the actual like Chinese people taking the risk with the banks, buying the loans and buying the buying the bonds and stuff like that. Like you can you can go out and invest in the mortgage market with your mutual funds today. Like you can go out and buy a, a Vanguard Ginny May fund. OK, so speed run. Any percentage, what's going to cause China to uh, to implode? Just start listing the factors because we got fucking waste management and fucking chat. It's like, what's going to ch cause China to implode? Go for it. Uh, well, okay. So right now their biggest bulge in their demographics is in the 40 through 60 year old uh, demographic, which is your consumer base. After that, it turns into a V, much like a swimmer's body. And once that consumer base becomes retirement age and they start spending down their assets and getting to a point where they can't consume the way they used to be, all of a sudden you don't have money flows the same way you did and your GDP collapses. Once your GDP collapses, a lot of things go with it. And so you have companies that basically have to shut down because nobody's buying anything, nobody buys anything, more people get laid off, and all of a sudden you have this just demographic time bomb that destroy, can destroy a country. Also, they were... And, South Korea's demographic time bomb is even worse. Dude, like, and also China was like, China weirdly built their economy. Like the, the, the whole real estate built development boom is oh, just a, ghost sh towns or just ghost a cities or whatever shit show of how, how not to accomplish things. Dude, I was, I watched a whole fucking thing on that Evergrande corporation. Jesus oh, yeah. fucking Christ. How was that allowed? Well, that's what authoritarianism gets you. I know, right? Like, I just uh, the whole time, like the, through the whole story, every time they they would start talking about like you know the loan manipulations and shit, I'm like, holy fuck! Like how? Well, that President Xi has had to come out 
um, or Winnie the Pooh or whatever his face is, uh, has had to come out and basically backtrack his whole support for the four banks in the of the developers such as ever um and from ever ever grand yeah it's, yeah, it's grand. grand grand with an e yeah yeah because that makes it more quote unquote english or something yeah it was, it was very european they were trying to sell that like the shops or something like that with an extra p who is who is who is swede swede is um a risk management specialist for a very large financial firm let's just leave it at that um, um, but President Xi has, has had to come out, and I believe the direct quote was, is, is housing is not for speculation, housing is for living in. And you and I easily can get behind that statement. Um, so the, the problem is, is he, his, his actions haven't backed up his words. So his actions over the last, because he has to, he has to pay homage to the capitalists. In, in China because they support his entire regime. Yeah, 50% of fucking... Dude, the state-run state, state run media was on fucking Twitter like a couple weeks ago uh, putting up infographics about how 50% of their economy is privately owned businesses. Mm -hmm. No, like private business is a, you know, a, a, a tent pole is a foundation of the Chinese economy. And they were, they were promoting it. They're like, look mm -hmm. at this. Like half of our economy is private, uh, private industry. And you're just like, I just, you know, you're sitting there fucking chuckling at all the tankies and shit. You're like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, who would have guessed? Yeah. Well, and, that, and, that, and that's the unholy alliance between Shanghai and Beijing. One, they, they, have, they need each other. They absolutely have to have each other. And the reason, you know, Beijing needs, needs Shanghai is money. And the reason Shanghai needs Beijing is, prote is protectionism. This is state capitalism 101. Um, and for anybody wondering, these are all, uh, these are the, um, this map shows 20 of 50 cities that have large vacant housing, but these, uh, these cities are all considered ghost cities. Yeah, they were originally built for, I believe, 5 million, and then they scaled them back to like 1 million. And now I think a lot of them are just down to 100,000. And so you have entire buildings, much like the hotel in Pyongyang. They're just, they're empty and they're unfinished. They're just open floors. Uh, and eventually nature is going to, you know, do its thing. They already, they already have. Like there's a couple of fucking YouTubers who are like Western that I follow that like are in China and they'll go around and fucking film these places. You know, like, yeah, don't do, do Chinese construction is shit to start with and nature works faster than you'd think. Um, so well, yeah, and, and Chernobyl is, is a great example of that. Nature has nearly re reclaimed, uh, Pripyat. Oh yeah. And I mean, people like when we're talking about like ghost cities, like this is a ghost city. Okay. This is, we're not talking small fucking like, Oh, they built a couple of buildings. We're talking like cities. And waste management, you, my uh, my name is the same as it is on YouTube. I every once in a while post a video on why things work the way they do. Um, the only comments I've gotten, which are two, are very positive. <laughs> <laughs> but the the last one I did, I did one on fiduciary duty, and I did one on gas prices not too long ago, on why gas prices were the way they were and are they really as high as they are historically? And the answer was no. I mean, here, it's a great, it's a great example, right? Like look at, look at this shit. There's not a single car. There's not a single bicycle. There's not a single person. It's just dead. Like, um, uh, my YouTube channel, if you don't see the Calvin and Hobbes logo that I usually have, if it's a Sweden ball, that's me. Yeah, there's, there's dozens of these cities spread mm -hmm. across China that are are a, a remnant or an artifact of China's weird fucking way they propped up their economy and created like this, this I don't know, like vestigial artificial growth. They, they bootstrapped their economy to land development and used 
fucking completely unchecked loans as near as I can tell. And then when they finally did put a check on those loans, they only put a check on the domestic loans. So then the fucking companies like Evergrande just went international. Mm-hmm. It, it it's the craziest shit. Like yeah, there's a there's a whole host of factors. Um, actually the um, uh, um, oh um, it, okay, no 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 yeah yeah, yeah. hang on. W- watch the Poly Matter series here. Uh, copy link here. Start here. Here's the Poly Matter series. There's like a four videos. The, the first one is on the demographical collapse of China. The second one is the housing crisis. The third one is the water crisis. In the and then summer- um, there's like a fourth one kicking around somewhere, I think. Uh, yeah, there's the fourth one. The fourth one is why China sucks at soft power. Oh, they're terrible. Yeah. Um. And then um, this is the guy that fucking Swede named uh, Peter Zahan, uh, Zahan, whatever the fuck, however I say his fucking his name. Um, Peter is sort of, uh, he's an international analyst. He's a, a political analyst. Um, but he gets really into demographics. And he'll do like de- demographics breakdowns of like various countries, especially of China. If you want to hear why China is extraordinarily well fucked. Um, go listen to P- some Peter Zahan as well, um, and he'll break it down for you. Yeah, he's a demographer. Kubes, uh, it, it's it's hard not to get obsessed with him because he's a very good speaker. He's very charismatic. Um, some of the conclusions he draws, uh, I'm a little iffy on, uh, because like the whole military comparison, you know, you you could go. I mean, the the nuke power is the ultimate. You know leveling leveling of the playing field it's just like when the handgun first came out for women it was the ultimate leveling of the playing field (laughs) um and so it it was it's it's a little bit you know but but he's a very eloquent speaker very good uh the data he uses is solid um uh, but again look at the data and make your own conclusions is what i can say with him some of his conclusions Um, i totally agree with though I'm big on being iffy with solutions. I mean, hey, uh, how much longer is China going to be an economic superpower? Any guess on time? Are they an economic? Uh, would I would I describe China as an economic superpower? Is my first question. Uh, I would cons- I would consider them an e- a consumption superpower, not really much anything else. Because I mean, they're, they're no longer our source of cheap labor. Uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, India, uh, Laos. Um, and every time I say Laos, I think of King of the Hill. I am Laotian. It is landlocked country in Southeast Asia. So are you Chinese or are you Japanese? <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it's um, it is. It, I I would say that they're no longer now. They are the highest source of engineering talent in the world, um, and even more than that, India. What's that? Even more than India. Yeah. Wow. I mean, uh, India cranks out engineers like fucking we crank out Taco Bell. So that's why I was mm-hmm. just caught off guard. I was like, really? Even more than India. Um, yeah. see, see the th- here. So I have a, I have a acquaintance over at train who is the Ingersoll, who used to be with Ingersoll Rand, but they got spun off. So they make HVAC systems huge. Like if you need a clean room, They'll yeah. make it. Um, you know, they, they're the, uh, how many parts per million do you want? Okay, only three. We can do that. Um, so they're the ones that have to basically go to Shanghai because when they put up a help wanted ad in Shanghai, they get 4,000 applicants. If they do that in LA, they'll get 30. <laughs> and they have to pay more in China, it's just the fact that they, they just the, the pure numbers is what they don't have. It's it's kind of the same reason the city I live in is losing lost uh, ConAgra to Chicago is because uh, the local talent wasn't sticking around and they couldn't hire enough of it. So we lost a Fortune 500 company. Still got three, I think, but. 
<laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, um, One of them being Berkshire Hathaway. Fucking, what do you think about arbitrarianism? Uh, arbitrarianism isn't a thing. I mean, I'm sure somebody has coined the term, and I'm sure there's a subreddit for it. But <laughs> our arbitrarianism isn't really a thing. I mean, that sounds like relativism almost. Um, I mean... I'm guessing it has something to do with arbitrary basis of our decisions and that there's no intrinsic value assigned to something like, I don't know, business or fucking money. Yeah. Or... I would totally agree with that. I'm a nihilist. Yeah. But I, but I'm, I'm, the, the, I'm, a, I'm a nihilist in this, in the vein of the way, um, Nietzsche actually, you know, said nihilism should be, it frees you to create your own meaning. Um, Zippy, uh, sneaking into China in mass and taking over one of their ghost cities, um, not not on my uh, list of things I'm looking to do in this lifetime. <laughs> it, 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 those those ghost cities would make wonderful housing. I agree, um, but claim what if we ask nicely yes China, the land of no, the notorious land of asking nicely gets you what you want. Um. Xi actually needs to open the borders. Um, and, and I love this argument that I get into with right-wingers all the time. Is, is, and, and even economists I disagree with uh, on this very subject even agree with me most of the time on this. Is like we have to open our borders to maintain our demographic edge. The reason being is because we're not producing enough children. Otherwise, it, like if we closed our borders, it would – it would we would turn into the next China because uh, the demographic bulge would just rise to the consumer. And so what you're saying is you're a supporter of the Great Replacement theory. Got it. Yeah. Yep. Got it. Yeah, we we have to replace our entire population every what is it, fifty years or so. A fucking. So. And if we have to do it with with uh, immigrants, fine. I don't care. <laughs> um, based on the way our economy is built, we have to do that. Um, oh, China, a hundred percent wants Taiwan. A hundred percent wants Taiwan. Now, well, ideologically, yes. Whether they get them or not is another matter entirely, because we have the U.S. has one of the most interesting foreign policies. I'd say out of foreign policies. As far as Taiwan is concer uh, concerned, it's con uh, it's called official ambiguity. Um, when China notified us back in the day of their intent to uh, claim Taiwan as part of the People's Republic of China, the official U.S. response was goddamn hilarious. We sent a letter that said, we acknowledge your claim and we, res uh, we reserve our uh, any future opinions. We're just like, yeah, we hear you. Yep, heard. We, we left them on red. Yeah, basically. We, we're just like, okay, gotcha. Um, meanwhile, like, yeah, like we, we are very, we, we will sell them tens of millions of dollars worth of weapon systems. We don't give a shit. And the whole time we just sit there and go, you know, like one of our recent comments was fucking hilarious. F uh, uh, China made some overtures and somebody asked like, well, what would, um, what is the official U S response if China were to um, go to war with Taiwan? And the U S response was, it would be of, uh, it would be of our concern if you did. The fuck does that mean even? <laughs> the fuck it means enough that they haven't done shit for Yeah. We we <laughs> we officially do not recognize anything in that part of the world. As far as the official stance goes, don't know. Ask us sometime later. Maybe our opinion will change, but for now, don't know. Are are we on Taiwan's side? Nope. Are we on China's side? Nope. Do we do business with both of them? Yep. And Taiwan seems to be down for it. The 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 polling the 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 polling data that I've seen out of Taiwan on these matters is very much don't rock the boat. Like 
just let's not declare ourselves ourselves a state and China won't get all uppity about it. And we don't have to worry about it. We got a good thing going. Just shut the fuck up. So like, yeah, like do we, can we force statehood on somebody like that? Like, you know, who doesn't want it at the end of the day, it's a really weird fucking situation with Taiwan and China. Um, but I don't see t- uh, China invading Taiwan mainly because we've hooked them up with so much gear. <laughs> that it's well, that and and Zeihan's uh, uh, yeah, oh, uh, China analysis of the of the naval difference between oh. China and the United States is, oh, it's, is spot on. It's China doesn't even no one compares to our navy. No one. China has what three escort carriers, two of which used to be floating casinos. Yes. Yes, that is true. That is true. Yeah, two of two of their two of their carriers, which aren't even uh, aren't even fucking full on fuck if aircraft carriers. Like we run them. Yeah, they were floating casinos. <laughs> they converted. And the third one was a, a repurposed uh, World War II battleship, I believe, uh, yeah. or something like that. It's crazy, but but you know, and Japan did the same thing. I think. Four of their six carriers were originally in dock to be built as battleships until they learned that, hey, aircraft carriers are actually more effective. Let's see. I believe Shokaku was a battleship originally. The Hiryu was a battleship originally. It's this one. Hang on. It's this one. This was originally going to be a casino. <laughs> Exol, um, if I did have details on the, the successor to the TPP, uh, that would mean I am way more uh, in with the uh, in crowd than you think I am. Yeah, it, it's it is it, China is hilarious when it comes to like military strategy. Now they're growing, they're growing, but. Not at our rate. Like, yeah, I think it's 2240 is when they could catch up. If we stopped rate. all development, that's the, that's the clause on that number. That number is asterisk. China can catch up to us by 2040 if we shut our military, uh, military industrial complex down tomorrow. They would, they would take two decades to catch up to us. If we just did nothing, not two decades, two centuries. Oh no, I've I've heard this century they could catch up. Um, Based on current militarization rates, if we don't build anything more, it would take China two hundred years to catch up to us. Jesus Christ! So they'd have to accelerate even more. Yeah, but like it's it's just a joke, folks. It's a joke. It's a joke. The the and they don't have the dry dock space to do it. The, the U.S.'s military is, like, it's a size that you can't comprehend. This is the thing. Most, you can't comprehend these things. You just can't. The human brain is not wired to understand these concepts. Well, the, and the concept of military is different because, like, China has more soldiers, but we have a, 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 an order of magnitude higher force multiplier based on the technology and the command systems and the order of battle systems that we have yeah, combined and, armed units, and our base soldier is far better trained than their base soldier. And they've been at war for the last two hundred years. Yeah, it's it's so not a it, there's, veterans. There's no one to one comparison here. There just isn't. Like we would, it, it like yeah, yeah. Are we set up to go to war with a fucking bunch of rice farmers? No. That's not what our, our weapon systems are set up for. But if somebody like Russia or China wants to step, b- back to the Stone Age with you. Like, we will... Do the Aegis it, radar system alone is psychotic to read into. And that's just basic technology on all, for all of our carrier groups. It can see hundreds of miles over the horizon. It, it's, it's just craziest shit. Like it, it just submariner here. We don't do that. Hey, car accident. You were a submar- uh, submariner. Fucking love you guys. Um, fucking allergic to light. My favorite submarine headline was China hides submarines underwater. Like no shit. 
<laughs> I mean, I mean, fucking like chi- China hides submarine in tree. All right, now you have my attention. <laughs> right? Like, what the fuck is that about? But yeah, underwater. So, Carr, you have to tell me where, what, what type of boat were you on and where were you? Because I have three friends that were submariners. And one that was supposed to be, but he uh, was diagnosed with ulcers, and so they couldn't put him under under the water for six months. Um, I mean that's true. I mean that's true, Axel. Hey, what's up, Gut Punk? Um, six. Axel, if you want to know about the TPP? I can ask some of my friends about it, and they can probably fill me in on it. I just don't really care. Uh, he was he was on a six eight eight I hunter killer in Somalia apparently. No, but were you based out of um, Amelia, near Amelia Island? Oh, what's the um, St. Mary's, or were you in San Diego? Um, I, I wanted to say Jacksonville, but Jacksonville is not the base. It's St. Mary's, Georgia. Yeah. Um. Oh, New London. Okay. No, all my friends were in uh, St. Mary's. Let's see. Hang on. Aegis is the close air uh, defense system. Aegis is the um, it, it's the ACS, the Aegis um, combat system. It's command and control. It's it's um, command and decision. Sorry, it's C and D. Um, it's command and decision. It basically is this like giant network of interconnected radar systems across multiple platforms to track and guide, uh, track web incoming weapons and to guide weapon systems on target as necessary to destroy enemy or uh, any, any enemy targets. It's this incredibly complex woven radar platform that is spread across multiple, um, systems. And then it all comes into into bear. But there's like the vertical launch systems. There's the phalanx. There's a whole bunch of various weapon systems that ties into the Aegis radar system. And the phalanx, the Gatling gun that sounds like a zipper, like yes. the MG42 did. Yes, it just <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the big white dome with the fucking yeah yeah. <laughs> That's the phalanx. Um, yeah, it's it is the the Aegis system is hilariously complex and like we're not the only runs the ones that run it we've given it to japan um korea um australia you notice a pattern here um <laughs> okay, it, it, basically i'm pretty sure we we might have hooked taiwan up with it recently as well um basically we've kitted out the entire south pacific with ages systems <laughs> So we're all just tied into the command and, de- uh, command and decision uh, network. Oh, good on you, God Punk. I'm glad you're happy with what you wrote. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, yes, it is. It is, in fact, named after the Age of S.H.I.E.L.D. That is, that is true um, it, of the, uh, of the, of Iliad fame. Uh, <laughs> uh C was they call it says uh car accident. Uh yeah, it's it's even there's even like um there's like fucking anti submarine stuff in there. There's um fucking like tomahawks. There's all sorts of shit that is tied into uh oh god punk, you already do just by existing. Um but it is the system is said to be able to uh to track um a hundred targets at a hundred miles. Um, that's, that's sort of like the Aegis system is when it's like properly rolled out and engaged, you could launch a hundred missiles at one of our carriers. It will track all hundred missiles and target and destroy all hundred missiles. (laughs) The problem with launching missiles at an aircraft carrier is you have to get through the destroyers and the cruisers with their phalanx systems. And then the other anti-missile systems that the carrier has on top of all that. Oh yeah, Nimitz all Nimitz all had Aegis system, Rev. Yeah, the, the Nimitz class all have Aegis. Um, so, what weapons do you want on the boat? The yes, Ford class is the new one that they're building right now. Yes, it is. Um, yeah, I believe it's uh, the Ronald Reagan is one of the Ford class. Let's see. Uh, yes, it is Gerald R. Ford class of nuclear powered carriers are the newest ones. That is going to replace the Enterprise. Um, so Nimitz, Nimitz class. Did they 
take out the nuke uh, destroyers? Are they going back to diesel destroyers? I don't know, but I don't think so. I thought I read something about that, that to maintain nuke on a destroyer was just untenable. They're going back to diesel. Let me check. That's why I was asking car because are they? It looks like the um, it looks like the DDGXs may actually hold on. Well, the DDGs are all phased out. That's the old Spruance class. All right, then I'm not seeing any destroyers listing for diesel plans for the next generation, like the. DDG next and the like the Zumwalt class. Um, I'm seeing, I'm not seeing anything, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's entirely possible. Yeah, but, uh, I, I don't know. it's one of those where I thought I read it somewhere, so it must be true. Exactly. Um, yeah, the, the, the fucking Ford class doesn't like there's nothing, I don't know doesn't look fancy i like i like when the military gear looks fancy and you're like yeah that's definitely like a a new version right you can look at it and go that's fucking sexy looking right nah just looks you like know, the sexiest submarine that i've ever seen was is i got to see a u uh, u class 22 the first um german u-boat that was all electric that oh. thing looks sweet i liked um i liked russia's alpha class um, Those were, yeah. They were okay. fucking psychotic. <laughs> they were absolutely dude. The Russian, like the Russian Alpha class, was using like a liquid lead coolant system for their uh, for their nuclear reactors, and yeah, um, yeah, it was like a liquid lead bismuth cooling system for their nuclear reactors. <laughs> it was absolutely. They were kind of psychotic. Like they were kind of psychotic. Uh. Peak and that, it's one of the things like you say things like that and you think, oh, my God, why would you put. But see, that's the one of the things that I think people don't <gasps> understand when guy. they talk about the space race of why the Soviet Union beat us almost at every turn, except for when it mattered. Which is actually putting somebody on the moon is because we had more safety checks all the way through. Oh yeah, dude, yeah. that fucking that story about their fucking cosmonaut that fucking knew it was, you know, uh, that knew that it was going to blow up on re-entry mm -hmm. and he had no choice in the matter. Yeah, dude, they had all sorts of stories like that. It's it's oh, the Soviet Union beat us. Well, yeah, they did it because they cut corners all over the place. The other annoying story that I hate the most is the whole pencil story. God, Jesus Christ. They used the pen too. Yeah. They, 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 and we didn't spend what a billion dollars on a pen. We spent, I think like $1 million to, uh, to put together a, a zero pressure. Yeah. And I mean, you know, and because floating fire. graphite fire, in a pure oxygen environment, fire, Fire, <laughs> fire in space is worse than fire on a boat. Go talk to a sailor how they feel about fire on boats. Right? Like, it's way worse in space. Fucking Jesus, God. Yeah, that is, that's the annoying fucking story. Um, but the thing is, is that story just won't die. Like okay. stupid car, car, car accident. I do not like fire. uh -huh. Um, you heard about the Italian well, ham radio brothers who believe they got a recording of a Soviet female cosmonaut dying in space? No, I don't. I don't. I haven't heard that. Uh, <laughs> caboose. <laughs> Fire in a pressurized environment. Uh, Car accident. How many times did you guys do fire drills a day? I know, right? <laughs> it's just ridiculous. In that story, you're right. That story just refuses to fucking die. I fucking hate that story. But it makes the rounds on Reddit like at least twice a year. And if the top comments always like, this is fucking bullshit. <laughs> uh, car accident said too many. 
Oh, dude, there's actually, there's a, you know, those like insider, you know, those videos that everybody does, like every fucking major, like shitty magazine insider or whatever fucking does those like, um, com, uh, 17 combat movies rated by a, a Navy seal, you know, shit like yeah. that. One of the most interesting ones. Um, well, there's two, um, there's one, uh, 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 submariner, uh, submarine captain. Um, who fucking ended up like, I don't know, fucking part of a, you know, attack group or some shit like that. And he rates submarine movies. And then there's a three star admiral <laughs> who rates, who rates, um, like naval warfare movies. And his, he, he actually says like the, they show him a clip from battle, uh, battleship and he goes, Oh, I love this movie. And you're just like, wait, what? The three star Navy admiral loves battleship and i do too that last scene is awesome yeah no he's You're like i die, love this I'm movie he rate he die. he rated it horribly he's like oh no it's completely inaccurate he's, it's just full full of bullshit he said but i love this movie <laughs> He's just that last part when they drop the anchor and you're know, like skid yes. into position. With the yeah, gun. he he took a minor exception with the fact that they were in the Pacific Ocean, and he's like, "Yeah, that wouldn't have reached the bottom either." <laughs> but you know, yeah, those are those are two really good ones: is the the submarine captain and then the the navy uh, the the navy admiral, right? And it's like, holy shit! Like these are serious dudes. These are serious mm -hmm. dudes. But like one of the, I'm sure he loves um, um, Das Boot. Oh yeah, yeah, that was on the list as well. Yeah, Das Boot's probably the number one realistic. Um, oh, I that that's that's the one that's the one thing that I'm surprised is not on soundboards for more um, Twitch streamers is the alarm scream <laughs> from Das Boot. Oh yeah. I, I enjoy those. Yeah. I enjoy those kind of videos. Like a fucking expert in their field. Fucking like let's let's watch some shit and see see their opinion on the matter. <laughs> like, I forgot how long Dos Boot was last time I put it on. Was like I'm gonna watch Dos Boot. Four hours. I was gonna say, isn't it like yeah, it's fucking a while. And an hour of it is them fighting about being stuck on the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> the original cut's only 149 minutes. It's not, that's not too bad. It's, I mean, you know, two and a half. Yeah, there's there's like some cuts that fucking, it's absolutely, like, yeah, there are definitely different versions, 100%. Um, yes, Scott Punk, four hours. The the full version of Das Boot is four hours long. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it had a theatrical release, but it's also been a TV miniseries. Like, it, it runs that long, yeah. The director's cut is stupid. Ah, uh, was that one? Uh, we were soldiers, rated pretty high, I believe. Oh, um, I watched. Uh, I watched a trauma surgeon. Um, I watched a trauma surgeon who did um, um, fucking like medic scenes and stuff like that. And for him, it was um, Hacksaw Ridge because Desmond Doss is the biggest dick swinging motherfucker in the room, no matter where he is. Um, mad respect. Um, it was, it was Hacksaw Ridge. Um, fuck. What was his top three? It was Hacksaw something and mash. Um, he had, uh, he watched, they, they showed him the mash episode where, um, they had to pull the, uh, uh, the rifle mounted grenade out of the soldier. And he was like, it's actually really accurate. He said, you know, usually he said when we did it in the field, he said what we would say is who wants accommodation? He said, because it's automatic. He said, you're getting accommodation in your in your file if you, if you survive this incident. He said, so we just ask. It's like, who wants accommodation? <laughs> it's I, like, like it happens. It happens. One um, of the one of the stories I love is about um the people that came back from World War II that were, you know, field medics, obviously never went to medical school, but have a lot of field experience. So every, uh, the entire medical community went, it'd be a fucking waste if we put these people in other industries. So uh, that's where the physician's assistant position came from. That entire 
career, the PA career, was designed for for to accommodate the, the uh, field medics. Yeah, I mean, I got nothing but love, but especially a, a PJ, dude. PJs, I fucking, I I will free like Kaiser's fucking thing. Free blowjobs for public defenders. Free blowjobs for PJs. Fucking for those of you who don't know what PJs are, PJs are um, airborne medics who fucking jump out of planes and jump out of helicopters into combat situations behind enemy lines like a fucking special forces badass that they are and fucking belly crawl their way to wherever the down soldier is to fucking stabilize them and get them evac They are Imagine if your ER doctor would like drop... Like if you, you needed an ER, uh, like a trauma physician, a trauma surgeon in the middle of the Rocky mountains and a fucking helicopter just goes over and this dude parachutes out and lands next to you. And he's like, I'm here to do surgery. That's a PJ. Dude, this guy, those guys are fucking psychotic and I love them for it. Fire jumpers. Also fire jumpers. If there is a heaven fire jumpers, auto, auto get in. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, oh, hey, we have somebody throwing around commie and the malnourished thing. Uh, you look malnourished. Is that normal for commies? Oh, adorable. Um, good, good luck. Good luck. Um, <laughs> what was Irish's YouTube again? Somebody drop it in chat for Zarin, please. And thank you. Uh, Heroes with Wings, literally. Yeah, dude. And I mean, Desmond Doss is the baddest ass motherfucker in the history of mankind, as far as I'm concerned. Like, if there's, if there's a list, like, I hope there's a heaven just for Desmond. Like that's, that's, you know, I hope heaven exists just so Desmond can get what he wanted. That, that, the power of that man's faith was second to none. I, I just fucking every single t- like that will make me tear up thinking about that fucking, um, um, help me get, one. Help me get one more. Yeah. It's like, Jesus fucking Christ. 75, 75. Fuck you. <laughs> that's, Oh, that's a fucking number. That's a fucking number. Like that's, that's a real fucking number and haven't done rope work. Mm-hmm. His hands had to be shredded. His hands had to have been shredded. Like I can only imagine the amount of like trauma to his hands doing that kind of work. Cause he was just like bare, bare handing and fucking cloth wrapping his hands to do like a around the body, di- uh, belay dissension. It was just, Jesus Christ, behind enemy lines on Hacksaw Ridge of all places, fucking, you know, surrounded by enemy soldiers, just dragging these motherfuckers out one after another after another. Jesus fucking Christ. And the whole time. Yeah, think Forrest Gump times 75. Yeah. Just, just the whole time. All he's doing is asking his God, give me the strength. Help me get one more. <laughs> fucking hey. Yeah, he honestly, Desmond Doss, the baddest ass motherfucker. He fought with the military. He got congressional approval. Uh, he fought with the military to, you know, as the line goes, run into the hellfire of battle without a weapon to protect yourself. He's like, I, I, I will be there. I will serve, but I won't. I won't ever shoot anybody. I will not. I'll never fire again in anger. Yeah. So. I never watched Hacksaw Ridge. I feel like I should. Dude, I love Andrew Garfield just because of that movie. Like, fuck the rest of his career. He he got to play Desmond Doss. Dude, that's... Fuck. It's, it's rare you get to play somebody who's like a real hero. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, have you ever heard the uh, podcast uh, Behind the Bastards? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, they did um, John Wayne recently oh god he's but a terrible they, human being <laughs> yeah but, but they but they went into him you know a draft dodging obviously mm. uh, world war ii of course but they went into some of the other stars that did take the call and like i didn't know humphrey bogart was a ball fucking turret gunner really i mean if you, you want to talk about <laughs> And Jimmy Stewart flew, what, 20 sorties as a bomber pilot? Nice. Like, I mean, at least, you know, I mean, it's all bullshit, but fuck. I mean, at least those wars, those wars back in, you know, those days were just wars. As just as any war can be. The war that we've been involved with that was just was that one, I believe. 
Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, and Andrew Garfield isn't himself in it. Like, he's actually acting. It's it's proper. John Wynn was a Nazi. Good punk song. Yep. Um, Yeah, it, it's... Dude, there's... I, I, I gotta I'm give some Hollywood kids credit back in that day, man, because some of them answered the call, and, like, Jimmy Stewart was flying bomber. Imagine, when, imagine... Yeah, 50, Loss rates. Imagine your pilot being Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> well, gee. <laughs> right. right? <laughs> we're we're going to fly over Germany, you see. Fucking. Uh, what did Elvis do? Elvis did a bunch of cush fucking promo ads for the military. There, yeah, that. Um, but you can't really blame him if you're going to do anything. Um at least, you know, it helped. John Wayne did nothing. I'd rather have Steve McQueen, to be honest, as Rev. <laughs> well, uh, buckle up. We're going in. Um, Yeah. Yeah, Steve McQueen. Yeah, he, the, in that John Wayne, they, they kind of go down a list of people that actually, like, took up the call to go over and fight in Germany. And, and um, the, the kid that died in um, Civil War in... Um, uh, 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 What's the movie? Oh, Saving Private Ryan. That was the fucking trauma surgeon's other pick. It was fucking Hacksaw Ridge, Saving Private Ryan, and MASH. That was the top three for fucking the trauma surgeon. The part that Saving Private Ryan that got me was the Czechs speaking in their own language, trying to tell the Americans that they don't want to be wearing the uniform they're in. When they, when they try to make them dig their own grave. Yeah. Um, no fury. Well, I mean, it was it, it was a trauma surgeon uh, looking at scenes of medical care or field medic work and that sort of thing. So, you know, yeah. Platoon is my personal favorite. Elvis's hips were his weapon. Imagine Tim Allen or Ted, uh, Ted Nugent did some. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm a sucker for, like, a, a, a story like that. Dude, fucking, I'm not kidding you. Um, Hacksaw Ridge will make me, like, cry ugly. Like, just ugly cry. Fucking, you hit that last 40 minutes of that movie? Oh, yeah. Just, just, I'm gonna be fucking sobbing. Um... Dad says they actually did have one crash filming bullet and it was a stunt driver. The scene where he's almost drifting. You tell he's about to wreck, but it cuts my good night, Puka. Good luck. Um, Oh, gone with the wind. That was the movie The the kid, uh, Bogart's one, one of the kids of the leading actors in the movie died, uh, battle of the bulge. Oh, geez. So it's like, these are leading actors that, had big parts, went over there and died. Yeah. John Wayne. John Wayne was a pussy. And a Nazi. And uh John Wade tried to win um who was the who who sent who sent the indigenous woman? Who oh uh, Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando sent the indigenous woman. John Wayne tried to beat her up. Yep. That's that's for real. It took six people to hold him back. Yeah. Marlon Marlon Brando sent uh, sent an indigenous woman in his place for the Oscars, and she like his acceptance speech. She got up to say her piece, and John uh, Wa- John Wayne had to be physically restrained by six grown ass men because he was gonna beat the shit out of her. Yeah, good old John Wayne. Because John Wayne would only employ Italians to play uh, Native Americans. He was a piece of shit. There's just no way around it. He was a piece of shit. John Cracker Barrel Wayne. Uh, <laughs> wounded me. It happened right around that time, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and we got a Will Smith slap and a Chris Rocky. I know, right? Dude. Fucking A. Dude, the, the Will Smith story was in the news longer than the fucking Buffalo shooter. <laughs> Fuck, we have our priorities wrong. Yeah. We were going through we were going through his fucking Discord logs as well. Like we we did the manifesto, we did the the the, the stream, but we were going through his fucking um his Discord logs and dude it gets it gets sad. It gets sad. It's way too humanizing. 
and you're just like, oh fuck, man. Like, and yeah, we saw we saw the inciting incident too. Um, I'm not kidding you. Like, there's there's a single incident in there that I I I maintain. I will go out on this limb. If this hadn't happened, that Buffalo shooter wouldn't have shot up that store. His he what was, it? What was the thing? He was at home one night, and because he had been posting photos of like his ki- his cat and stuff, and how like you know as he's planning, he's like, I hope you know when I'm in jail and stuff, and I hope my parents take care of my cat. I've always you know she's always been by my side and stuff like that. He come he's hanging out at house one night. All of a sudden, there's this like scream. And he um, he goes out to the garage, and there's a feral cat trying to murder his cat. So mm. he puts he kills the cat. He kills the feral cat. He ends up chopping the feral cat's head off and burying it in a shallow grave. And he has like portrait photos of himself, like in the mirror, after it splattered with blood, and a photo of the decapitated cat in the shallow grave too. And he he talks about how he like expected to feel something, but he was just numb. But he was happy that like he had defended the thing he cared about, the thing that he loved. And like the way he talks about like defending the white race and defending his heritage and that sort of thing, like I can sincerely see like this was the first taste that like, oh yeah, I can do it. I can do it. If that feral cat hadn't wandered into his garage, I actually believe that those 10 people would be alive today. Yeah. Yeah. The universe is a fucked up place. It to just causal events and shit, right? Like that was that was the thing that I was just hung up on. I was like, dude, just some random shit like that gave him the first example that he needed, that he could do it. Yeah, he stabbed the fucking cat multiple times, finally got his hands on it, fucking took out a hatchet and fucking decapitated it. And he like, yeah, he expresses how like I expected to feel sad or something. I just feel numb but I'm happy my cat's alive and unharmed. And you can sort of see the transfer of the emotional status over from like, okay, I care about my cat. My cat was in danger. I fucking put, took care of the threat. I don't really feel negatively as a result of it. And I feel good about my cat being okay. And given the wind up and all of the ideological fucking shit he had in his head already, it was easy to see one plus one equals shoot up a store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I name and being a hard determinist. uh, It's hard to, to think about these events because you're like, nothing could have changed this because all of the events leading up to this would have had to change too. every single link in the chain. Beast, so Beast just said, "See, see, see! Feral cats cause genocide. Been saying it for years. Um, <clears throat> cats, cats in general cause genocide. Um, yeah. Um, just give me a name. Uh, honestly, it would have needed to be something in that same. He needed to take a life. He needed to take a life, and that's 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 the honestly like." <laughs> he, needed know, he, need, he needed to know he could do it. Yeah. And an opportunity presented itself that was just. It, 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 this isn't just, it, this isn't like he's stepping on a fucking thing or accidentally running over a dog. This is, this is in defense of something he cares about and loves, which is what he's espousing about, like, you know, his, his, European heritage and shit like that, right? It's something he cares about. It's something he loves and it's in direct, it's in direct danger. It's under threat. And his entire ideology is based on how we need to, how we need to take action as Europeans and we need to deal with these great, uh, these replacers as he calls them. And it was this perfect opportunity to like, it was just this confluence of events that, yeah, this is something he cares about. This is something he loves. It's under threat from an outside force. And he used violence to put it down. And now the thing he cares about is safe. And he didn't feel really bad about taking that life. It was a demonstration for him. It really was. I'm telling you, if that feral cat hadn't wandered into that garage, I don't think that shooting would have happened. It was the craziest thing to read those logs because his Discord server was essentially a journal. It wasn't a public server. It was his, like, journaling process. 
And so it, there was lots of like internal thoughts and dialogues and shit like that. It was, it was really weird coming across that section because I've, you know, you're scrolling through and all of a sudden you're looking at, you're staring at a photo of a decapitated cat and you're like, Oh, what serial killer nonsense is this? But it's way worse than that. Like there, there's no history of serial killer animal abuse here. He cares. He gives a shit about animals, but it was mine is under threat by this one. It was literally his cat versus a gray street cat, a street cat. And in that moment he made the decision and he followed through and it didn't feel anywhere nearly as badly as he thought it would. I'm telling you some shit. <clears throat> some- It's, yeah. Um, have you seen the room pick Zippy posted? Is it legit? Um, mm, I did. Somebody point me to it. Where am I looking? Uh, Beast, tell me where I'm looking, and then let me know. Uh, yeah. Even Zippy's like, huh? Um. I have 60 viewers. Oh, it fuck it. Uh, let's see. Memes. Oh, you know what? Um, I have not seen those photos in his Discord logs, so I can't tell you specifically whether or not they are. Um, yeah, I haven't seen those photos, so don't know. can't tell you but yeah it's uh the fluttershy cum jar one yes apparently that's what it's supposed to be um i did that 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 image is such low quality sorry also that's entirely too white of a layer to be oxidized semen i i do that's Semen doesn't stay that brilliant white when you leave it out. So, like that's that's dude that that white is the same as the white in the in the sheet. Like that's 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 not like I'm sorry. That's just that's just Twitter wanting to be Twitter. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I subbed to Swede on YouTube when he did that charity stream, modded me and Zippy, and Zippy immediately tried to ban me. Sounds about right. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, September 17th this year is my next one. Oh, somebody, um, Pound Coin in chat, fucking talk to them. Not about uh, fucking economics or anything, but the, the ALO's. Dan Lowe's stuff. Eiler, oh, Eiler's Dan Lowe's? Yeah, they're they're in that camp as well. Oh, yeah, have fun. Uh, it's not Marfan, but it's still just as shitty. Yeah. I don't know anything about Eiler's Dan Lowe's Dan or Dan Lowe's. Okay, so you... Yeah, okay, so never mind. Um, p- pound coin, same camp, different, different tent. Yeah, I don't... See, I don't know that Eiler's has the same... Um, effect on the aortic valves or anything like that. I'm, I, I'm completely lost when it comes to that. Yeah. We were looking have a, having a, we're all broken the nighttime stream the other night. <laughs> and I got, uh, I got the Mar fans and the Ehlers, Ehlers Dan, and Dan Lowe's fucking swapped. Um, what I'm seeing somebody getting tagged seriously. Um, 
Oh, it, I mean, come on, guys. This this person's account is like pff, new this month. New this month. Don't, you know, they're just a fucking idiot troll. They're probably, like, y'all are tagging them. They're probably already gone. Fact of the matter is <laughs> those types of idiots are usually cowards writ large, and they fucking just, you know, yeah. They're probably bungee cord commenters. They bungee in and they get pulled right back up. Oh, no, there they go. Oh, here we go. Does he not realize the Jews? Oh, my God. Never mind. Why? Why I even. Walked. It, I have a, I have a, I have a joke for you here. I don't have a punchline yet. But an idiot walks into a room full of thirty plus ordained ministers. <laughs> I bet you this guy thinks Isaiah fifty three is actually about Jesus. I like. I have the setup. I don't have the punchline yet. Um. <laughs> oh, I, I we had dude. We had a tier list. Uh, fucking, and I I had a. a the, the creepy Catholic pedophile made it on the bottom tier, a genocidal maniac, and a serial killer all fucking ended up on the bottom tier. And I'm like, dude, this is the start of a fucking joke. And we like, I was like, no, wait, I have it, right? A serial killer, a pedophile, and a genocidal maniac walk into a bar. The bartender says, what can I get you, pontiff? That's fucking simple. Just, it's the Pope. Uh... The aristocrats. Um, let's see. <laughs> I don't, this is fascinating. This person just walks in and seems to have a fucking feather up their ass about Jews and uh, Jesus. Who would have guessed? <clears throat> the dumb Jews don't even recognize Christ as the Messiah. He's merely a prophet. That is special. They didn't even think they thought he was a prophet. Yeah, they they consider him a human. He's a he's a ra he's a rabbi. <laughs> he's a rabbi. He's a rabbi. That's they do not believe in the divinity of Jesus. No, I mean, you know, the Muslims at least, um, you know, they they they're like he's a prophet in the same vein as you know Muhammad. Uh, the Jews are like, no, just a rabbi. It's a part. Uh, <laughs> read the Quran. Are you shitting me? <laughs> that motherfucker ain't gonna read the Quran. Holy shit. I always love the the, the 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 vocalizations of the Quran because it's like a separate thing. The singing of the Quran, I always find that beautiful. Oh, I, I don't. Well, we had to have one before Friday was over. Yeah, I know, right? Like we definitely needed, we definitely needed one of those. I mean, we had we had the genius kid who fucking, God. The internet didn't exist before 2007. Holy fuck, that kid was dumb. Um, Pre-Facebook, man, nothing existed. Jesus Christ, that kid was fucking <laughs> retarded. That was- I remember when Facebook, you had to have a college email to sign up for Facebook. And it had to be a recognized college. Yeah, you needed the dot edu. edu. You had to have a dot edu email address. Yeah. Fucking, I, I, the kid was special. He was special. Uh, I hope he comes back. I'm going to keep him shadow banned. It'd be hilarious. Um, but like, yeah, yeah. Al Gore invented the internet. Shaking my head. <laughs> fucking Jesus. That kid was fucking dumb. Almost, almost as dumb as our little, um, our what little part fucking did Al Gore actually have a part in, in, in the creation. He really, yeah, no, he really did. He was like, he was on one of the like commissions or advisory boards that made sure that a whole mm -hmm. bunch of funding got pushed through. Like, it, it, you know, fucking, but in a way he had a hand in the development of the modern internet. It, it isn't completely insane. Al Gore didn't create the internet, but he made sure that it, you know, didn't flounder. 
Um, uh, it's it's Muhammad and Jesus, uh, Crimson. Uh, Abraham, fucking yeah, that's a whole other ball game. He made sure it got funded and cut red tra- uh, red tape. People at DARPA apparently really credit him. Yeah, no, he he made sure he. Um, he was a visionary. I mean, he really was when he, it comes to that. He ensured that it didn't go away. Yeah. Um, well, Cyberheart, I'm glad that you're you're you've been dealing with it in the healthy healthy way. That's good on you, man. Good on you. Um. Yeah, just you know, we're just dealing with the the average, the average idiot. That's all. <laughs> For somebody who's got four twenty in your name, you desperately need to smoke some weed. Just desperately. I think this guy loves Paul Joseph Watson and his views on Jews. Um, I I don't even know. Like, I don't know. Uh, Let's go. I don't know. Oh, Mr. Jeffrey, the reason they don't think the Messiah returned is because Jesus didn't fit everything. Like, if there are 10 prophecies and you only fulfill nine of them, you're not the Messiah. So that's that's why Jesus is not considered the Messiah, because he didn't fulfill all the prophecies. And some of the prophecies you think are about Jesus aren't. Like Isaiah 53 is not about Jesus. So, Oh, good on it, Rev. I'm glad he did. Oh, God. He thinks the Jews are Luciferian. <laughs> the real, the real, the Messiah the Jews secretly worship is Lucifer. Okay. <laughs> I bet you this guy has a protocols of the or, or the, the Zion. Oh, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm fucking hang on. Like, huh, we'll, we'll just go. Hold on. Um, Do Jews worship Lucifer? No, I'm just going to, I'm going to pull up a photo of this guy. Give me a sec. I'm, I'm sure I can find a photo of this guy. Um, South Park. Make of not Warcraft episode. No, <laughs> 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 mm. sweetheart, Pookie, I'm an ordained minister. I haven't engaged with you at all because you're speaking nonsense. There's no point in me talking to you. Hang on, everybody. I'm just gonna pull up. I'm gonna get a get another photo of this guy because you know he looks like this. I've used this photo recently. I love this photo. Hey, everybody, I found a photo of retired trap star Jeffrey 420 on on the internet. <clears throat> uh, behold the master race. I one of the best. Love it. Be- uh, yeah, dude, seriously, just fucking browse, behold the master race. Uh, fuck it. Uh, <laughs> just an absolute garbage person that you're just like, yep, yep. And, and you know you pity that person because the reason they're in that group is because they were looking for, like, to belong somewhere. And everybody else was just too cocky to let him just be involved in stuff. And so he fell in with that crowd. 
You this know is, that happened. This is this is one of my favorites too. This is a great one. The 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 Untermensch fucking propaganda and then modern day neo Nazi literally looking like each other. <laughs> oh I just it fuck it's like Jesus Christ, these people are just garbage people. They're just garbage people. And every pagan that I know who pagans are really cool people, by the way. Every pagan I know is like, God, I wish they would stop appropriating our stuff. <laughs> oh, fucking a. Um, and then, oh yeah, fucking yeah. I mean, I love the, the, that old fucking quote by uh, St- Stephen Hawking <laughs> when asked in an interview um, what his IQ was. Uh, by the New York Times uh, author who's writing the article, He's fucking it, it. It was it was described as a curt reply. He said, "I have no idea." People who boast about their IQs are losers. <laughs> like he just, it's like he, he just had no fucking patience for it. He's like, "If you bring your IQ up to me, you are a goddamn fucking loser." <laughs> this is the smartest man in the room, pretty much everywhere he went. Oh, fucking A. Hey, Astral. Um, I'm jealous of people that can remember things. Fuck. He's, he's just a brilliant fuck. It's absolutely astounding. Did the, did the ignoramus leave? Um, They usually do. They usually bitch out. How many chromosomes you got more than you, bitch? <laughs> That that is a uh, that is an insult to all Down syndrome sufferers. Uh, the Rev IQ is bullshit. On a side note, I scored one thirty four when I was fourteen. Um, dude's still here, being boring. Ah, oh, that's a shame. When in doubt, climb the tallest building and yell racist or Nazi comical. You're literally going on anti-Semitic screeds. <laughs> <laughs> You walk into the room, go on anti-Semitic screens, and you're like, these fucking Jews, these goddamn fucking Jews. <laughs> you're like, what? Huh, fuck it. It's just the lowest form of discourse from the left. When they get attacked, they just yell Nazi. Motherfucker, you're wearing an SS armband. What do you fucking expect us to do? Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ, you people are fucking dumb. It is astounding how absolutely unaware, like this is why self-aware wolves exist, right? You know, that's, that's why that full sub fuck subcategory exists is because you people are so goddamn lacking self-awareness. It is ridiculous. You're like, how dare you call me a racist? I'm just calling a bunch of black people N words. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's. You know he's got a copy of the protocols of the elders of Zion on his desk. I mean, he probably he probably does, but it's probably useless because all the pages are stuck together with the, from the cum. <laughs> Can you imagine jerking off to eighteen uh, hundreds anti Semitic literature? <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing sexier than was it? It's Russian backed propaganda for anti Jewish propaganda. Just brilliant. Yep, that's, that yep, just gets yep, me yep, hard, yep, man. Yep, yep. The propaganda used to justify what the, the partitions of Poland. Fucking Jesus fucking Because of their huge Jewish population. It's it's ridiculous dealing with these sorts of people. And, I, you know, we deal. I deal with them five days a fucking week, right? Like, this is, we, the joke on the channel at this point, everybody, all the long timers know it. They're three questions away from the Jewish question at all times. And this motherfucker wasn't even three questions away. This motherfucker walked in the room yelling about Jews. Right. Like usually we have to ask them like three questions. Right. It's it's how do you feel about like the elites? How do you feel? Well, how do you feel about mainstream media and how do you feel about finance? You can usually between those three questions, get the Jewish question out of them. Right. Or journalism. Yeah. Or it's well, yeah, well that's just mainstream media. Ma- lamestream media. Um, 
Like that that's what that's fucking you this motherfucker just walks in the fucking room screaming about Jews and he's like, How dare you? You don't you can't even have a conversation with me, you fucking pathetic left low IQ leftists. My galaxy brain can't possibly comp- be comprehended by you because you just reduce everything to racism and Nazism. You walked in the room screaming about Jews. Homie. Take your fucking pathetic little dick energy somewhere else. This is fucking sad. This is sad. This is, dude, your dick is smaller than fucking Trump's at this point. It's kind of sad. Like, um, all they do is scream shit. They hear nothing. Uh, it's all George Soros's fault. <laughs> fucking Jesus Christ. Uh dude, what's gonna what are they gonna do when George Soros dies? Right? Like um, what the fuck? What what is the who's gonna be their boogeyman now? Like George Soros is like a thousand years old, right? He's like ninety something at least. Um, and it's gonna be all the foundations he's set up and the Jews he's put in place and like who's gonna who's yeah. gonna like, yeah but like you know the open society foundation isn't a fucking good enough boogeyman as george soros so when like Trump comes back comes back from what wait he, where did he go i mean he's he he was in mar-a-lago the entire time during his presidency and he's still in mar-a-lago the entire time outside of his presidency come comes back where Oh, Randy Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg's sister, maybe. Um, <clears throat> I don't think Trump can do that because he's still too busy shitting out the paper he ate from all the documents he stole from the White House. He's not used to a high high fiber diet. That's that's that is true. <laughs> that is he he has way too much fucking uh, way too much. <laughs> um, can you imagine eating top secret? Di- I mean, that's like a get smart level. Okay, one, the kids the kids in the room don't know get smart. Um two two, you're right though. That is a get smart level fucking um I'm also feeling um who is uh oh god, oh jeez. I'm I'm feeling Mr. Bean. Yeah, that's accurate too. Um I'm feeling naked gun. Uh, Peter Falk. Peter Falk. Oh, Columbo? Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, it feels very Peter Falkish as well for some reason. Fucking, oh, and one more thing. And he slides a fucking piece of paper off. And just, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Leslie Nielsen would be a good one, too. Yeah, dude, Leslie Leslie would play fucking uh, Trump just to a T. He'd have nailed that fucking role. He wouldn't even have to try. No. You're right. Yeah, he'd nail that role. He's got Taco Bell in his DNA. He does. <laughs> He would, all he would have to do is recall how we did airplane. I mean, that. <laughs> um, oh, I think I'm going to watch airplane tonight. It's on free. Uh, or on fleek, as the kids say. Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Um, so my goal when my kids get old enough to understand how I'm trying to annoy them is to take one generation off of kid slang and use it and try to be cool and just know that it's annoying the shit out of them. Fair enough. I mean, that's <laughs> dude, that's, that's the appropriate use for modern terminology. <laughs> that's for anybody who's not like if you're, if you're beyond 15 to 22, the only appropriate use of all that like new slang is to make, make kids go, Oh God. <laughs> I feel it's like, like my right as a father to do stupid shit like that. It's our right as survivors. <laughs> Dude, if you survived your parties, if you survived the drugs and the drinking, if you survived the failures of the body, if you survived the stupid shit you did <laughs> as a young person, congratulations. One of the, one of the, uh, the earnings that you've gotten is to make uh, young people just absolutely cringe. <laughs> Um, cringe. No, we don't say cringe anymore. Oh, did you eat? <laughs> what about yeet? We don't say yeet either. So you yeeted cringe? Yep. 
What's even better is when you bust out some of the old school, old school ones, and they're just like, what? Fuck. My, my favorite is uh, Antifa Stone Toss, the subreddit that mm-hmm. rewrites Stone yeah, yeah, Tosses. Yeah, yeah. Stone, Stone Toss is a Nazi. Oh. Yeah, is, uh, is uh, Pebble Yeet. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, uh, <laughs> fucking A. That's crunk. Papa John said that's crunk. Um, <laughs> Zippy used to annoy uh, her parents by saying groovy. Oh. Um, Urban Dictionary is going to save my life when my kids start using slang that I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Doctor Evil, I'm I'm with it. I'm hip. Turkey, 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 turkey. Um, this is got punk. I live to make people like you sad. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's fucking absolutely. And it's fucking because apparently we have young dumb ones running around that think the Internet was created like a few years ago. Like, dude, cause fucking I'm sorry. Like the when you encounter that in the wild as a grown ass man with grown ass man problems and you're just like, you know what? Yeah, maybe young people shouldn't vote. <laughs> Like, homie, that I need that prefrontal cortex to firm up a bit before I even have a conversation with you. As <laughs> shitty of a person as he was, Winston Churchill was right. The greatest argument against democracy is a five-minute conversation with the average person. It is. It is true. Um, I told my work the other day I'm bilingual because I speak Gen Z. <laughs> Uh, I already used the Urban Dictionary to figure out what the kids are talking about. Dude, you need to be able to use Urban Dictionary, period, because there's just a lot of fucking slang that gets developed on a global scale on the internet, and you just need to be quick. You're like, I don't fucking know what the hell they're talking about. What's it mean? And it's best that you actually know that you're not saying some racist shit. <laughs> yeah, dude, you could be running around saying glowy and shit. Like that's you, you don't know. Like yeah, it's you know that guy's a that guy's a glowy. You're just like, homie. Do you have any <laughs> idea what you're talking about? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, oh, fucking yeah, dude. There, fuck it. We could, there could be some shit that you just slip right by. Um. I told my sister again today, she ain't grown for four more years. She's 21. I believe cis women's frontal cortex is fully developed around 22, 23. Yeah, I'm still going to say 25. 25. Fuck it. We'll just do equality across the board and do 25. Uh, Rev, I will give you the full details off air. (laughs) Um Oh my God. I used to work with a, I worked with a woman who used to say, sorry, toss uh, sorry for tossing your salad when she was trying to say, excuse me. Jesus Christ. Wow. <laughs> yes. Ooh, Pfizer reported earnings today. Um, it was hilarious, but I got in trouble for not correcting her. How is that your responsibility? Um, What do you know? Earnings beat estimates. They're over 4,000 bucks a share. Jesus. Oh, that's of India. <laughs> 4,000 rupees. Oh, well, in that case, a place was a shit show. Yeah, clearly, Zippy. Um, usually don't need to apologize for tossing someone's salad. You know, I mean, I love, yeah, I'm, I'm in that camp. I'm in that camp. Um, so for starting a transition, a second puberty, did I add another four years to adulthood? No, you're in a, a permanent holding pattern, Karina, until we can uh, verify you separately. Like you, you're going to have to be, you're going to have to be checked out again. Sorry. Just is what it is. Uh, we'll, we'll put you before the review commission and we're going to need those forms filed in triplicate first. And then we can uh, we can have a conversation about that. Let me just check something here. It's what I thought. 
Oh, homie, you think I'm... Why is it... Why is it that fucking... Dude, look at this shit. Like, look at this shit. Show your hairline? Yeah, they, they're, they're, because if you wear a hat, you're clearly covering... Like, I'm not even... Like, I'm wearing it halfway back my fucking head, and this idiot's like, show your hairline. Because they think I'm bald. Like, would you like to also see me without a shirt on while, while, you're, while, while you're wanting that? He does. Maybe... Maybe this is a uh, pickup line. I mean, you know, we can get it. Who created the, who did the meme the other day? Uh, well, we can pop that one, I suppose. It was Che. Che was the one who popped the fucking, uh, who did the meme. So we'll just, you know what? We'll just use this meme as standard fucking, there we go. So we'll just get a, we'll just get ahead of this for this. Who is this person? Oh, Master Beta. Well, Master Beta, here's here's some material for you. Um, fucking here's what I look like without a shirt on either. Um, so like, yeah. I have a head full of hair. I have an eight pack. I'm fucking cut. I look good, and you know what? I can get laid within minutes. If it takes me an hour to get laid, I'm annoyed. Welcome to my life. How's life as a cop these days? The sex is less satisfying, but there's less work. So, sort of is what it is, right? Um, I do enjoy some of the power plays I get to make, though. Yeah, the top, the top, okay, so the top stuff is a throwaway for me. The top stuff is a throwaway. The Dom stuff is amusing, though. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun being a Dom. Yes, yes, probably Drew has it right. Save it for your spank bank. Yeah. City privilege, kind of. Yeah, it kind of is. Um, where'd he go? Where'd the guy go? I live in, homie, I live in Las Vegas. I live in Las Vegas. Also, the fact that you, you defaulted to Grinder, you know we don't use Grinder anymore, right? <laughs> like, Grinder's like 2009, man. Like, nobody uses Grinder for that. Like you, you do realize like we, yeah, I got fucking, I got methods and means, man. I got methods and means that you're not even aware of. Apparently a city is only as good as its shadows. Dude, uh, th- uh, th- there are straight chicks on grinder from what I've heard. Yeah. Which is fucking weird as shit. It's like, get the fuck off the platform. But yeah, I live in Las Vegas, man. I can like literally just like, I can, uh, fucking, I can, uh, I can fucking, huh. <laughs> Like, I can just throw a fucking fishing line out my window and fucking grab one. Fucking, literally the last time I was uh, I got laid was uh, was off Cougar Life, and she drove three hours for me to rail her all night. Nice. Good job, Vev. Um, yeah, this is, this is a fucking, it's like, dude. I'm a gay guy, and I look good without my clothes on. And I'm pretty goddamn good in the bedroom, right? Coming at me with that shit is just like, hey, you know what? I'm going to run up and punch Mike Tyson. Why? <laughs> Dude, were you looking to get smacked around? Like, is that your intent? Homie. Well, they I, could go after me, but then they just get railed for being going after the disabled kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fuck it. Oh, you're pathetic. You're pathetic. You're a little bitch. You're, you're just a little bratty sub, as far as I'm concerned. I'd straighten you out. Fucking throw a gag in your mouth, tie you up, fucking flog you a little bit. You'd you'd uh, you'd know your role after a bit. Do you go ball or stuffer? Um, or ring? It sort of depends on what I'm after. Um, hold on. Fucking. Why is... The full-on panel stuffer was was one of my favorites. One sec, there we go. There we go. Um, I still remember, still remember the look on your face when I when you figured out I knew what Sub's face was. Fucking yeah, dude, you caught me off guard on that one. Um, I prefer, I prefer, um, I prefer the expandable. Like if I had like full preference. Oh, 
Um, I no 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 the um the like uh horizontally expanding dildo. Have you ever seen these? There's like the there's like the dildo gag, but it there's. Yeah, the the bit, but there's ones that you can like uh, that are pneumatically powered that don't get wider but get longer. So yeah, oh yeah, you can. You have to send me a picture of this because I'm not. I don't think I'm picturing what you're. It's it's the same gag with like the small dick in it, but the dick gets longer. A panel with a yeah gag. Yes. Um, Oh, those yeah, those have been around for days. Yeah, but it gets longer. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen those. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> that's okay. Cyber, not everything's for everybody. Um, fucking yeah. Like it's, that, it's like the butterfly inflatable. Um, I've seen those for throat training. Yes. Yes. Um, and that's something, that's something my subs have to like, just sort of like be good at. I don't tolerate that sort of thing because I have like functionally no gag reflex. When it comes to deep throating, it just, it just, it just isn't like I have a gag reflex for every day, but when I'm, when I'm doing that, nah, I can just fucking, I can just mash my face right into your fucking abdomen. <laughs> like it doesn't matter. It fucking goes right down. So, um, you have a pro state. Oh, car accident. That was good. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, have you seen the hinge throat bridle? Yeah, I have. Um, your throat clearly loves the cock. <laughs> I like dick. I do. I, I like dick. Like I, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'll just lay there and play with one. <laughs> just, just amuses me. So, you know, why not? That's the way to go. Some people wreck their gag reflex entirely, and that's a bad idea. Yeah, I don't know when I fucking... I, I don't know when in the process I managed to, you know, switch it off. But it's been that way for a while. I can I can just fucking deep throat. Um, bat it around like a cat. Yeah, basically, Beast. Yeah, I, 100%. Like, I'll just lay there and play with it and fucking, you know, suckle on it. Whatever. It's a fun time. Dicks are good. I like dicks. Um, where'd our, um, where'd our Jesus freak go, by the way? Did, uh, did Jesus, Jesus McGee go, uh, go away? What was his name? Yeah. I started with a J, right? Or Gary or whatever. Either way, he's gone. Jeffrey 420. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, he's gone. Fucking Jesus, Jesus McGee fucking ran for the hills. Um, <laughs> fucking. Ran away screaming, uh, uh, the coward. Yes. I knew someone who claimed to not have a gag reflex, but it was dating someone else who cheated on me at the time, and I was physically incapable of cheating. Interesting. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Okay, that's what it was. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, no, they're gone. Um, thank you, Cyberheart. Cyberheart with the fucking... Mosul has called him... No, it's not... It's Usul, not Mosul. Um, Usul. He didn't. He didn't have his armor of God on. <laughs> but, coin, get your Dune reference right. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh shit! The Herbert nerds are gonna fucking have a fight. <laughs> shit! Watch out! The Herbert nerds are at it again, y'all. <laughs> God damn fucking Dune. Dude, I just wish they'd make all three of those movies. Like, I don't, like, I'm not a big Dune fan, but I just want to watch the trilogy, like, sort of back to back and then render my opinion. But I'm not waiting, like, as long as they want me to wait for that fucking series of movies. Oh, you mean the actual trilogy, not the making of the fake one, the the David Lynch one, and then the new one? <laughs> yeah, correct. Um, I still <laughs> want I, I still want the Hodorowsky one. Yeah, the Alejandro Hodorowsky one would have been amazing. Like where, I, where Dune becomes a lot, the planet becomes alive itself and then warps off into nothingness. I, I dude, look, I'm, I'm here for Hodorowski. Hodorowski makes something. I'm here for it. That crazy <laughs> Spanish fuck. I am, I am down for whatever that surrealist nut job puts out. I don't give a shit if it's a Dune. I don't give a shit if it's a start. I want a fucking Hodorowski Star Trek episode. Are you kidding me? I don't care. I'm here for whatever Hodorowski puts out. Okay. Caboose, go look up Hodorowski's Dune and it's, it's Spanish spelling, so. Yeah. 
Uh, oh, Rev, I'm in that camp. I don't like Dune. I'm, I, you know, yeah, I'm a Foundations guy. Um, I'm, I'm Asimov, but at found the foundation series by Asimov is fucking, if you, if you removed all meetings by boring white, old white dudes, the foundation series is like 12 pages. It's, there's so much fucking, it just dialogue of meetings and descriptions of administrative and bureaucratic processes. And they're all white dudes. They're just all white dudes. Um, yeah, if you, if you cleared out fucking all the old white dudes and the bureaucratic like descriptions of meetings and shit from, uh, from the foundation series, you, you wouldn't even have a full book. <laughs> like it's it just is what it is. But at the same time, man, if you read J- George R. R. Martin, you know exactly what that dress looked like in every, in every like light sconce possible because it took him 12 pages to tell you what that dress looked like. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Ty, uh, Taika Waititi is... Frank uh, Herbert's kind of guilty of that, too. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, my wife and I were out on a walk a week back, and I encountered casual transphobia out in the wild for the second time in my life, but it was so lame. Guy just said, holy shit, you sound like a man to me. Just shot back with, so do you. Had a dope haircut, though. Um, f- I tried reading Foundation starting at number seven, and it was incomprehensible. I mean, you know. Yeah. Um, Astro, a good paperback, actually. Kind of like Asimov's short stories, which are great. Um, and Poundcoin was saying uh, Taika Waititi is uh, supposedly doing the Incal using a bunch of Hodorowski concept art. Good night, Gopunk. Take care of yourself. How do you, how do you uh, fare on Hyperion? What, what, is, what is the question, actually? How do you fare on Hyperion? Like, like how, do you enjoy the books, Hyperion? Um, I've never, no, I've never gone through the Hyperion novels. That's, um, yeah. that's fucking, um, Simmons. Uh, Simons, yeah. Simons, so. Simmons, whatever. Um, it is the, it has the scariest being in all of sci-fi. I think pound coin. I have meant to get to the cultures of the culture novels for ages now. Yeah. Dude, the, the culture series is on my list. Trust me. I have all of the audiobooks for the entire series. Like, the culture series has been on my list for quite some time. Comes highly recommended from people who know my, you know, style and shit like that. Um, so, if I ever get around to it, I'll let you know what I think of it. But, yeah. Um, well worth it. Yeah, everybody says the, the culture novels were, like, super fucking worth it um so yeah i'll get there one of these days uh kaboo said oh this guy about hodorowski uh this inspired a lot of 40k's art style hodorowski is kind of infamous he he, he hodorowski influenced a lot of shit that people don't realize i don't think i think if there's any case to be made that the warp is influencing humanity today it's him fair enough Um, oh, look, fucking the, the masturbator person's doing the, 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 the transphobia now. Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed? I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Shocked, I tell you. Shocked. Um, I'm not that shocked. <laughs> it's one of my favorite uh, episodes of Futurama. <laughs> shocked. Shocked, I tell you. Well, not that shocked. I just love Nixon in a jar. <laughs> uh, oh shit, my neck of the woods. Oh, what about our premiere? Oh, uh, AJ, Masturbate is just saying uh, Trudeau is a tra- is a trans man, apparently. It's pronounced shook. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> fucking beast said Trudeau isn't hot enough to be a trans man. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just, you know. I thought he was Castro's kid. I mean, he is Castro's kid. That 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 is just that's just fact. That's that's just fact. I, look, you can't you cannot tell me that Trudeau, Trudeau isn't uh, Castro's kid. That's just that's just fact. So, you know. Oh, uh, I think I'm gonna skip out until you go till off air. All right, S- fucking. 
good luck with your watch or whatever you're going to do. And yeah, we'll be wrapping up here. I'm playing Skyrim, man. I modded this to play like Dark Souls. <laughs> I was that bored. Fair <laughs> enough. It was a fucking Skyrim mod for seven days, apparently. Or Oblivion. Oblivion. It's just the same thing in my head. Um, a, a, a mod for Oblivion to play like seven days? No, or seven, days seven days to play like Oblivion. How can you have the ugly don't, characters, though? Don't ask me. <laughs> the beginning, middle, and end of that conversation starts it. I saw the mod in a list. That's it. <laughs> so... Uh, right on. I'll probably see you for before the movie starts. All right, man. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for explaining that stuff. Yep. Catch you later. Right. Everybody Irish sweet. Go follow him. Go sub him. Go whatever. Um, fucking. All right. Let's, 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 let's. Uh, I don't know who this person is. Somebody give me a name. Somebody give me a fucking name. I was watching Squiddy's watching James Aincaster. Um What a sweetie. Boo. Um Fucking Oh God. I guarantee I already know who this is. I'm like, I guarantee, yeah. Uh, <laughs> see, hot. <laughs> oh, now I hope you guys had fun with your your you know racist redneck moron. You know what? Yeah. Um, we're just gonna go into bad movie night. We're just gonna go into bad movie night. You know what? I'm not raiding you motherfuckers out. I'm not sending you anywhere. Uh, we're going to go directly into bad movie night. And that is what it is. So yeah, like you're in, you're in charge of yourselves tonight. Um, yeah, it's almost 10. Let's get this fucking rev. Of course it was Buck Angel. Of course it's Buck Angel. It's always Buck Angel. Send us to the bathroom. <clears throat> Um, no discord. We're just going over to discord. Um, so the, the lineup for tonight, um, is, as I said before, it's going to be Jesus Christ, vampire hunter, surf Nazis must die. And who killed, uh, captain Alex. I don't know if we'll get to all three. I don't know what order we'll play them, but those are the three that I have picked out for tonight. So Uganda's first action film, uh, a movie in which uh, Jesus Christ cuts a motherfucker's throat and then heals that brings them back to life and um, surf Nazis must die, I suppose is pretty fucking self-explanatory. Uh, so <laughs> is what it is. Uh, let's see. Go over to, I'm just going to go over to voice chat here. Um, solid choices. I thought so. I thought so. Uh, either way. Yeah. Um, thanks for a fucking solid week. I mean, you know, it's been a, Bit a bit of a rough week, I suppose, for me physically. My energy levels are shot because I'm not working out. Uh, sleep well, Cyberheart. Thanks for stopping by. Good night. Take care of yourself. Um. Oh, yeah. I think that is what it is. So, if you're going to join us for Bad Movie Night, we'll be on voice chat on the server. Um, and thank you, Cyber. Um. <laughs> those that sleep in these hours weaklings uh, but yeah we're gonna we'll, we'll see each other over on voice chat on the discord server if you're not a member of the discord server well well I don't fucking know what you're doing you already should be um, so everybody um, do I have I don't Ch I can't wait for the champions round of riffs yeah we'll get there car accident discord scares me <laughs> Put your big boy, big girl, big envy pants on and fucking get in there, bitch. 
Um, for those of you who may or may not, there is the there's the Discord link in chat. Uh, we're going to let's see. Let me just wrong one entirely. Right one. And let's see. That one. Um, and that one. So we're just going to play it out. We're already stacking into VC. I'll tell you without lying, I was born to quit smoking. I was born. You know what I'm going to do, though? While we're waiting for people. Pissing on that day, I'll stop talking so much shit about the government. Cause urine speaks louder than words on a politician or on a prison warden. Urine speaks louder yes. than words. I swear that today I was born to be living. I was born. Something like centuries of racism. Say, look at the man on center stage and pay no attention while millions get locked in a cage. Riots break out in Oakland. The urine speaks louder than words on a prison warden or on a court policeman. Urine speaks louder than words. Everybody, have a good rest of your week, weekend. I'll see you on Monday, or I'll see you around on the server. Either way, bye. <laughs>